and welcome to tonight's episode of Dice and Dudes. Welcome back, my dudes. Uh, we thank you all very much for joining us tonight. We're going to get through a couple of quick announcements, and then we're going to get right into tonight's game. Uh, now, first off, we're brought to you uh, by David House and Terrain. Uh, currently working on a very large commission and a very small commission at the same time. Those will be done here in the next week or two, and I will be accepting more commissions after that period of time. I already have a couple of people on the hook that may want to pick up a few things, so we'll see how that goes, but I will definitely keep you guys apprised of when I have a little more free time in order to make some more stuff and delicious D&D goodness for all of you guys, all right? So definitely keep in contact with that. We're also brought to you guys by our friends over at Game Ball. Sonia, tell us about Game Ball. Hi, everyone. So, Game Vault will have their regularly scheduled events this weekend, and along with Vampire with us, Dice and Dudes, on Sunday at 12 to 5, I believe. Oh, this Sunday, is Sunday. 10, 10 to 3. 10 to 3. Sorry. Oh, that's right. We changed our schedule for this week. Only. For just this week. For just this week. So, if you want to stop by, say hi, talk about the stream, you're more than welcome. We'd love that. And they're also having a Lord of the Rings demo run by none other than David. Yes, with a fully painted set this time coming out on the 27th, 24th, 24th. 24th. Uh, that'll be uh, starting tentatively at 6. Tentatively, depending on traffic, I may be a few minutes late. But it looks gorgeous. All right, I can do that. We're also brought to you uh, today by our great friends over at Military Gamer Supply, who helped us start up this stream and get this channel going. So we love them very much. Nick, tell us about uh, Military Gamer Supply this week. So it's usual, um, you know, 40K Commander on Fridays. We got our Commander League going on. Pokemon Casual Pokemon on Thursdays. But we are having, at the first of the coming month, just to put the word out there ahead of time, so people are ready, we're doing a beginner's 40K tournament. It's only 1,000 points, and uh, I will be there personally to help people fix their list or if they need mentorship, to do a mentorship. And I'm pretty sure Vince is there. He'd help out. I'm there for every 40K tournament. I don't play in the beginner's tournaments because it's that's not, not cool. It's not fair. But yeah, we'll be there to mentor because both me and Vince play on the competitive circuit. So if people want to get into it, you know, we have a beginner's tournament. Uh, I want to ask you about Warcry. What's going on with that? Uh, Warcry is on Mondays. Uh, we meet up around uh, 6 or 7, depending on whenever people decide to show up. You know, life yeah. gets in the way, life finds a way, whatever. Yeah, no, especially but, uh, with traffic. Yeah, mm-hmm. but uh, we are... We are just kind of like, a, we have a leaderboard right now, so uh, you could get two games in a week, and uh, the max you can get in the game is like 15 if you don't get like a total victory. Oh, okay. Per game. Very cool. So it's like... Yeah. Very nice. Thank you very much, Nick. Uh, we also want to start doing something very special. Uh, we're a very, 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 very small YouTube channel, <laughs> and we're trying to grow. Uh, so we want, we really appreciate anyone who subscribes to our channel and rings the bell on YouTube. Uh, we love you guys for doing that, and we want to start shouting out people that have recently joined. So we wanted to shout out Joe Bado. Thank you very, very much for subscribing to our channel. We love you, even though I don't know. You your face. I love it. And Lonnie overall, love you too, man. Thank you very much. I hope you guys are enjoying the campaign and you guys are having as much fun watching as we are playing. So thank you guys very much for that. Uh, I think that's going to do it for our announcements tonight. We don't have any other English events coming up, nothing like that. Mm, I mean, aside, no, nothing you're going to talk about. <laughs> well, no, I mean, like they, they do have a, a cross faction shard event that's going on. We'll see how that goes over the next two weeks. Oh, okay. So no, nothing super pressing. Like no one off events like the like before. Yeah. Yeah, not, not before. Uh, I mean, we are trying to move one of the shards in the U.S. Very nice. Uh, I think from I think it's it's headed towards Florida. We'll see where it goes from there. <laughs> it needs to get to Oklahoma City <laughs> in the next couple of days before the next one shows up. Okay. Yeah. Uh, also wanted to give a big congratulations to our own our very own dude Kyle. Congratu- congratulations very hard for on the job, my man. That is that is great. Thank you. We're proud of you, my man. It makes us all proud. And we can't say where he works because we told you he'd have to kill you. <laughs> wow. All right. Uh, if that, uh, That's going to go ahead and do it for our announcements tonight. So we're going to go ahead and come back in a few seconds with tonight's episode, episode number nine of The Guns of a Roll. We'll be right back.
And we're back. So, last time, the group had finally made their way back to Creole Ranch with the missing Yolkeps. After returning them very quickly and heading back down to brown water on their two-day journey, they met people along the way that were heading north along the Shield Maidens March, which is odd, as not many people were headed south. Uh, after talking to one of the passers-by, they discovered that work in some of the mines had been drying up, and many people are now heading back to Uruk and looking for work elsewhere. Others are heading out uh, to various uh, other places like Hagai and uh, Laoka. So we'll see. Something's definitely happening with that. But after arriving in town, they had themselves uh, a very nice time. They tried to wash off the uh, the dirt from the road, some more reluctantly than others. <coughs> Cheer. Um, they had themselves a very nice meal. They got paid by Lady Marigold very quickly, were paid additional money for their silence for the exact nature of what they did for her. Though it seems as if word has already traveled that they have done something for her, though the exact nature of that, again, is to be kept under, under wraps, or you have to return the money. Near the end of the night, before they decided to head to bed, Caleth was being eyeballed by a very large, very angry-looking knoll. Seeing this, Draven tried to intervene. The knoll made sure that Caleth would be present for the altercation and took uh, an opportunity to try to beat him into the dirt. After casting a suggestion spell that he would simply just walk away, which worked handsomely, uh, he began walking around town where at one uh, point Draven uh, jumped him to try to get revenge for Caleth or to just sake his own bloodlust. We're not quite entirely sure yet. After a very brutal fight, though, it seemed as if Draven was not quite up to the task and tried to <coughs> yield in the fight where the Knoll told him to send a message for him and then knocked him unconscious. Seen by Gunner. Gunner uh, did not accost him and allowed it to walk away. After retrieving uh, Draven's now Darius again's form, threw him into the, uh, the tavern and was calmed down by uh, the resident sweetheart, Nat. After that, they decided to call it a night. They headed upstairs to their two rooms and then began to get ready for the morning and the adventure beyond. What is their next step in the city of Brownwater? Tonight, we may find out. And that's where we begin, with the morning light shining into your rooms, having you blink awake. The nice frivolities, still not giving you much of a hangover as none of you got too drunk in what you were doing. But it's nice to finally sleep on a bed again, no matter how kind of sagging the rope uh, framing of that mattress may be. A feather bed is a feather bed. Some of you, though, are having to sleep on the floors when two rooms were available. Wait, I can't sleep on that. Soft. So you mattress. definitely, yeah, so you definitely, uh, luckily you had a, uh, a room large enough, with a bed large enough for you. But uh, he is correct, they are not the best rooms. Uh, so, as you all awake, what are you all going to do? Why don't we get ready for a meeting with Verlin? So washing up, getting ready. Who okay. else is in the room with me? Uh, it is you, it is... Uh, one eye. One eye, uh, tr and Darius. Cool. I'll kick Darius away. You are sore. Even with, uh, <laughs> even with Dakin's healing... I mean, you still got, I mean, it's a little bit of bruising, not too bad. I mean, it definitely would have been worse without his uh, special touch. Oh you know you keep saying it like that. <laughs> On purpose, because Joe is not here to defend himself. And touched by a priest. He is not a little boy. <laughs> In this world, they go for grown men. Oh, wow. <laughs> well, he is strong enough. He is. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that's bad. He'll hold some people down, that's for sure. Oh, man. Come back, Joe. Come back. Defend your honor. <laughs> <laughs> so, what is Darius doing? Wake up, Snowflake. Breakfast time. Oh, 
No, that's oh. not what happened last night. Oh, no. Well, he was kind of fucked. He was penetrated anyway. You just see him, like, push up on his hands, like, roll over, because he can't literally sit up. And I'll just, pick like... him up. So well, as, as you're standing up, he reaches around and starts helping you to your feet. Gives you a reach for him. Oh. I just grab him by the belt and pull him up to stand. Oh. It's nice to have your black horn hair. I like that. Oh, you're in here, too. Oh. Why does it feel like I got my ass kicked last night and you just seem like... Because Draven got your arse kicked. <laughs> God, funny seeing that cocky bastard go down. The bad thing, even though I like him when he gets his ass kicked, I also don't like it because it's my ass getting kicked. <laughs> oh, um, I guess I'll hobble on downstairs now. You need to see him, like, limp, limp, just... Well, you're not going to put your shirt on, are you? You might, uh... He doesn't have a shirt anymore. Yeah. He doesn't have a shirt or a jacket anymore. He's got to find himself some clothes now. What? He is naked. Where's your no, clothes? No, he's got pants. You could go, go hey, down there bare-chested. Are you really going to talk about nakedness? I... <laughs> you just see him just, like, still just try to, like, process and shit. Just, like... I don't know where the hell I've been for however long, how long that I've been asleep. Wait. So I don't know where my clothes are. I just know that everything hurts and I need alcohol. I mean, you just seem like walk out the door and just like... We had fucking alcohol for breakfast. We got green juice, tater juice, red wine, and grape juice. I think the little one drank most of the grape juice, but there's a little left. He's, he's going for that fucking cider. Okay. Uh, as, so you're the first one to kind of leave the room, and you're tiredly kind of walking on the stairs. Uh, as you start uh, making your way down the hallway, uh, you see a door open up. Uh, you see uh, Kalith and Cheer and Fionn kind of slowly filing themselves out of the room as well. Though. They seem to be in uh, much higher spirits than yourself. <sighs> I told you our alter ego shouldn't have followed. You can see it like squinting. It's like he's got a hangover, but it's really just a concussion. <laughs> yes. <laughs> just like... I, I, I tried to keep him from going after him, but uh, hard hit on that one. I, I, I have no clue. I just know that everything hurts. I'll see you downstairs there. Uh, Cal. He just seemed like... Yeah, you slowly make your way kind of down the stairs. Uh, as you make your way to the bottom, uh, you look. The place is pretty dead this morning. Uh, not too many people. There's a couple of people that ended up sleeping at the bar last night. You can see them slowly waking up. Uh, Norris has placed a couple of like bowls of water on the uh, bar so that way they can kind of freshen up a bit, get themselves ready for the day. Sitting at one of the uh, the th one of the three round tables, uh, you see uh, Dakin. Uh, as well as Valine, and a very large woman. Probably one of the largest women you've ever seen. You know, her uh, black hair has just a little, a little bit highlights of silver in it. She seems bent a bit by age, but just the way her, she's sitting and the gaze that she flicks upon you and when she watches you walk down the stairs, you get a sense that there's some fight left in this woman. Is it is she like tall and broad, or is it like an old wall she coming? Oh, uh, she's uh, <laughs> she's she's fairly skinny, uh, okay. but she is she's definitely got muscle on her. Uh, okay. Go ahead and roll me a uh, history check real quick. So, more CrossFit chick, less bodybuilder chick. Yes. I didn't know if he's talking about the chunk. No, 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 no big chunks. Not big. history. Uh, yeah, it's true. Big, not thick. Not uh, you know she is wearing the traditional habit of a sister. And you actually know that the particular habit that she's wearing, the, the habit that, that she has on, it's not like a traditional habit like you see in a church in our world, okay? The habit that she wears, it's almost more like a friar's uniform, but the, the clothing itself is a... It would, it would be almost blood red, but it is faded as it's been used quite a bit. Uh, you know that uh, the white stripes that are on the shoulders denote that she is the sister superior of whatever church that she belongs to, which is the priests and the, uh, the uh, 
nuns as they were. There, there, there's no the nuns. Nuns don't really exist. A priest can be a man or a woman. They're either a, they're either a brother or a sister. So she holds the highest position in her church. She is the leader of her church. Cool. And the, you all, with that history roll, you see the symbol, the uh, medallion that she wears. It is the same symbol that you've seen uh, on Dakin's armor on his shield, and the same one that he wears on his armor on his chest. It's uh, the symbol of Sabbath, not not the not Rahiel, not the new not the new Lord of the Sun. Okay, but Sabbath symbol, the traditional, the much older symbol. Cool. So. Um being the former criminal that he is, he's going to you turn away from getting preached at and go straight to the bar to get some uh, the cider. Okay. Uh, as you walk up, Norris just kind of nods at you. And I have some of the cider. Everything hurts. And I just, I just don't want it to hurt. In a very gravelly voice, you know, uh, with the room, two drinks are free, so here's your first. He pours one, and he pours you a pretty generous portion of it in that same kind of weird, almost wine stem, like wine glasses, without the stem on it, uh, which seem like they should fall over, but you've literally seen them get hit, and they just kind of rotate on the bar. Only spilling liquid if they're truly, like, very full. He sets it down in front of you and goes back to doing what he's doing, which is fixing a... Now you realize it's the only breakfast he knows how to cook. Thick cut bacon, some eggs, and moldy toast. That'll cause one to care about. About not right now is when uh, you and when I can walk down as well. Of course. Bacon. Coffee. 20 minutes. Bacon or coffee? Oh, bacon. Coffee. Here. Uh, two drinks free with it. Uh, coffee's on the house. Uh, pours you a big cup of black coffee. Hold the rum out. Flavor it. Yeah. It's actually pretty good rum. But fairly high quality for what you paid for. <laughs> uh, as you uh, walk down behind uh, Gunner, you see that Valine is there with uh, who you know as uh, sister of Ramudi and Dakin. Okay. Dakin kind of waves at you and... Uh, uh, she wanted to have a conversation with uh, not just you, but a number of us. Uh, she's got a couple of things that she wants to say, so. Oh, okay. Well, if, uh, I guess my business can be your business. Um, well, I mean, you can speak to Valine if you want afterwards, but uh, she's kind of like now. You can see that Valine is wearing very similar garb now to Sister Ramudi, but it's a different color. It is a brown. So while she's dressed more like a, a much lower level uh, sister of the church, you know that she's not a sister of the church. It's just, hey, this is what we have. Hi. Was that addressed to me too, or...? Uh, if you wish to uh, have breakfast with us, like she would like to speak to all of us. She'd like to know the people that I've been, uh, you know, traveling with. Oh yeah, we'll find up, stand and sort that we are. Exactly. Let's go eat with the preacher, Aztec. Wait. I guess my name is lost upon you. Aztec One Eye. No, no. One Eye Aztec. Hey, fuck. I'm going to go to the bar, and I'm going to order me some breakfast. And, uh... I got that. Norse! Hashtag wants breakfast. He kind of looks over at you and growls. Coffee. Oh, no. I'm walking up to the bar. I'm like, uh, Norris, uh, might I have some water? Me? Hands you the water, and it's that same cool water. Uh, no idea how the hell it gets so cold, but it's... It, Touching the, the glass, it's like cold to the touch through the wood of this cup. Oh, that's some damn fine water. I don't know what you want to do with it. Oh, uh, not me. Wait, I would lie and just take credit. No. Okay, all right. Well, thank you very much. He flips over a couple of pieces of the bacon. I mean, now you're all's mouths are getting the water from the smell. I mean, it, 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 it may be the same from the breakfast that he serves pretty much every single day, but bacon's bacon. 
I'll come down and get a drink too. Mm -hmm. uh, what are you drinking? The cider. Cider? Mm -hmm. Same thing uh, with the room. Uh, two free drinks. Here's your first. Well, thank you. What about you, little one? Coffee. Just need coffee, please. Mm -hmm. But same size mug that he gave him, he gives you, which is, for you is very big. Yes. It's bacon. Lots of bacon, eggs, please. 20 minutes. He's over there. James, bacon uh, over there, and I need bacon here. Do you want lots of food? Okay, can whatever. You, can you mm -hmm. eat lots? You want flavor in Dirt Weasel? Uh, yes, gentlemen. This green juice in there tastes good with coffee. Mm -hmm. yeah, it tastes fine. What about you, Calith? I don't know if that would mix well. Uh -huh. uh, uh, well, well, why not? Just fucking try it. Well, you drink that one, and then we'll put some of this man. one in there. Oh, okay. Okay, okay. Gentlemen. So, Gentlemen. after a little while, uh, Fionn, do you uh, order breakfast or a beverage? Mm -hmm. Same, I mean, when he gives you water, I mean, it's in a, a stein size. I mean, it's a lot of water. I'm pondering this. I don't okay. see why you drink water. That's good for washing and yule kits. Now, the table that they're sitting at is a fairly large round table. It can easily sit 10, 12 if you really cram people together. Uh, so you guys can take your seats there if you like. Uh, if anyone is staying out of the conversation, just let me know. If you're not going to sit, we'll sit there. And I, so and let me know where you're going to be. Lots of extra room at the table. Uh, right now, the, your number, yeah. Tilt back and put my boots up. Cal, do we have to sit at the table? We should probably should. However, Why? seriously, met us. No boots on the table. <clears throat> Why not? Will you never put up properly? No. Dirty. Hey, my boots are clean. I washed them last night. I didn't yeah. step in no dung or none. See? Clean. Mm -hmm. Alright, alright. Manners. Put them on a chair. Okay. Oh, whisper to Cal. Why are we still with them? I don't mind them. But... Because they make us money. Okay. And they haven't stabbed us in the back yet. Uh, about this point is when Norris comes up and, <laughs> and starts just putting plates on the table. He makes a couple of trips. He's got very, very big arms, and he's got probably five plates in one arm and two plates in the other. Lays them down, goes back for a second trip. So that way, everybody's got a meal in front of you. I take him very politely. And he just kind of, he, he speaks gravel. He just... <laughs> And goes back to doing what he's doing. And I'm sandpaper. Much more than he is. I. He don't even talk to you. Why? But he doesn't shoot people either. With a gusto that none of you were expecting, uh, the very large sister. Uh, at this point, most of you have seen her. You were you actually saw her with uh, when Dakin first left. She met him when you guys first entered. So you've seen her, and he kind of talked to you about her. You know who she is. You know you would know what she is. Uh, same. You would really know what she is. Cheer. You, you've you've seen her at this point. So the gusto for which she eats and gets grease all over her face doing it kind of brings a smile to your face. And she's. Just like you, you know, she's people. And she's, within 30 seconds, that food is gone from her plate. And she... <laughs> oh, you served in the military. When, when, you have, when, when you're in a church, my dear, you do what you have to. Sometimes there's not enough food to go around. So it tends to be um, quick with the eating. Right. Same reason for the military folk. And this also gives me a chance to talk. Uh, you all can eat and listen, or however it be. I'll but, do another uh, way. I'll listen and eat. I would like uh, to at least know who you are. He's given me, me an idea of the kind of people that you are. He's going to be working with me for a little while. Uh, church is in a dire need of people. And I want to know the kind of people that you uh, happen to be, and whether or not you're going to be a force for... Uh, well, for good or for ill, for brown water. And Dakin seems to be uh, a bit on the fence about some of you. Others he has a good feeling about. But um, frankly, I'm indifferent to each of you. So I'd just like to get to know you just a little bit. Is that fair? Oi. So let's start with you, big one. 
What about me? What's your plans here in uh, in Brownwater? What brought you here? Money. Yeah, that's why most people come here. Uh, there you're a bit of a gambling man. Games of chance interest me. You want to play in? Uh, they, they don't much interest me. I don't have a whole lot of time uh, for such frivolities, but it, the church holds no uh, ill will against uh, games uh, as such. And if, you, uh, if you're seeking to uh, make your fortune through cards, this is a place to do it. There's uh, plenty of people about just... You're going to want to make sure that uh, you keep wary about uh, a few gentlemen. Those gentlemen being... Uh, Gorvis, Morak, and Thorvald. Why do you want to be worried about them? Well, because they're damn good. <coughs> they're very, very good with, with what they do. Well, one moment, my uh, Oh, you, may call me, you can call me sister, or Brahmudi. You don't like gambling, yet you know the three most gambling no. men... Well, I, know, I didn't say... I said I had no problem with gambling, and the church has no problem with gambling. I just can't... I don't have time for, them, uh, so, for, for such things. She only named two. Who's the third one? I thought she said three. Uh, Gorbis, Morak, and Thorhall. Oh, three. Uh, you'll be able to... It's pretty easy to see. All in their late 50s. All of them... All of them is a cue ball. They dress better than they look. Uh, higher than what their station may uh, lead on. Uh, they're, they're in the Ember Inn quite a bit. Uh, even bought a house here already with their gambling, uh, with that, with their gambling. So definitely some people to watch out for. Yeah, maybe uh, get yourself some fun. Thank you for the information. Uh, do you follow uh, the uh, Madam Sabbath? No. Well, <laughs> something to think about. Uh, you may not believe in her, but she believes in you. Doubt it. Mm. She loves all of her children, including those that uh, have maybe have lost their way a bit. And that's I know okay. exactly what way I'm going. Well, that's good. No matter which way that is, you'll wind up in Sabbath's grace, as long as you're not killing. <clears throat> and she kind of narrows her eyes at you, then smiles and looks over at one eye. And what about you, Master Dwarf? Wait, uh, I'm a humble scout. Who to serve with? Uh, who who to serve with? Oh, I served with Gunner here. And where? The Hilt. Serpent's oh. Fine Pass. For Southgate or for Silic? Southgate. Oh, okay. Spit on the floor when she says so. Uh, mm -hmm. I do too. Do <laughs> too. <laughs> ah, well, explains a bit. What brings you down to Brownwater? You just palling with your friend? Wait, well, no, I was planning to uh, fly me trade. Ah, and what trade that be? Uh, I aim to be supplying Brownwater with nice game and fur. Ah, the church is in need of a uh, fair few blankets. Of uh, you have any to spare once you're uh, done selling some of your stock? I. If Mr. Wayland Scissors isn't paying, you know, I'll think about bringing them to you. That'd be good. Uh, it's good to do uh, for others that can't do for themselves. But I don't work for free, so it's not going to Oh, I'm not asking you to work for free. The feeling you get should be a uh, great well payment for you. And what about you, little one? Mm -hmm. Haven't seen your kind in a great many years. What brings it around, Walter? Good as reason as any. And what uh, brings you, uh, how'd you get mixed up with these, uh, well, fine folk? A hint, detect a hint of sarcasm there. Isn't that Darius and Dakin? You traveled in the caravan to all this thing. Woman, a few words. I like that. Well, I hope you find what you're looking for in the water. Mm. And what about you, white hair? I'm going to sell the bar. Okay. And what about you, little one? Gentlemen, this one. With Cam. 
Strange, that's a strange accent you have. Um, where do you hail from? Here and there. Ah, a little bit of everywhere. Yeah. And did I mistake? Um, were you calling him Bacon? Yes, she was say Bacon. She, I, I, well, Bacon is delicious. <laughs> um, I've never been to you. I don't want to. And, and please excuse my friend. She does mispronounce things often. And what brings you to Brownwater? Here came Kat. And you brought her down here for what purpose? Uh, well, we've uh, business before, and we thought maybe we could business here. Oh, and what business was that before? We're not entirely sure yet. Ah, okay. Here in charge. I, I believe it. You have the stature of one in leadership. Give me a fucking we, we've, we've worked hey, together there's before. There's three present. Oh, sorry. That's right. There's a fucking uh, sister present. Now, um, if any one of you is needing cleansing of uh, whatever guilt you have, Sabbath doesn't like guilt. Guilt is a, it's a bad thing. So if you need, if you need to talk to anyone, uh, I'm the only, uh, I'm the only sister at the church now, and Dakin is not uh, ordained to be able to uh, absolve someone of their uh, sins or their guilt. So if you have either of those, please feel free to speak with me. I hope you will see my counsel as wise and even-handed. And should you wish to come to church, say a prayer or a hymn, or simply pr have me pray with you, I'd be happy to do so. You seem a fine, fair folk. And I mean that legitimately from from my heart. And I hope you all know that if any of you get taken killed, I'll kill you. I thought your God frowned on that sort of thing. Only when you do it. Be specifically or all of us? You specifically. And she just kind of smiles at you. Oh, she's going to be frowning a lot. <laughs> um, I think she likes you. I think the only person who might have got Mr. Mr. Dakin killed was me, Mr. Dakin. The last time we told him not to go do something and he ignored us. And he told me about what happened and sometimes he can be a little naive about people that need help. Uh, he definitely wants to help those who can't help themselves. Uh, and it can lead you down a bad path. Now, now, we, we should be nice to Dakin. Oh, Some I, I, individuals like Dakin follow where their heart leads. Some I'm individuals like Draven follow where their balls lead. <laughs> uh, uh, They're Dakin, both wrong. Dakin at first uh, like looks at you before you say your brother and is like, hey, thanks, man. Like, <laughs> wow, I didn't expect him to win. Oh, there it is. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Well, a good person. Well, thank you all very much for listening to an old lady prattle on. It's good to see new faces, and I hope to see you around the church. Uh, if you all be willing to uh, do a bit of uh, work, I may be able to uh, supply you with some room and board. Hmm. She kind of slowly stands up. I mean, you can almost hear her ligaments popping as she does. She's old, much older than what she looks. She kind of nods down. She says a uh, prayer. May the mother of light be with you. And she turns and she walks out. Uh, Norris immediately, without a word, walks around the bar, takes her by the hand, and like escorts her to the door. And they actually walk down the stairs a bit, and she makes her way off. You can see through the window her just making her way slowly south, heading to uh, the church of morning light. And passers by that see her think, Oh, sister, how are you doing? And, you know, they uh, seem to pay her quite a bit of respect. Uh, as that all oh, winds up, uh, Valine looks uh, at each other. Oh, I haven't really said it yet, but I'd like to thank each of you for helping me out. You kept your word, and I kept mine. So I'm glad to be seeing that I'll be sticking around brown water. And if you, uh, you should need some help, Feel free to, uh, to let me know. I'll be staying with Sister Ramudi. Uh, she believes that she might be able to fix my arm the rest of the way. And that's a damn fine gift for a person like me who doesn't deserve such a thing. Oh, you deserve it, Lefty. Oh, I'm 
fairly certain I don't, but I'm going to strive to do so. So, if there's anything I can do to help any of you, well, I'm indebted to you. So you go ahead and let me know just about anything you want. And, uh, well, I, uh, you were talking that, uh, you need to have a word with me. If you'd like to walk outside for a bit, we can, uh, catch some shade under the evening and have ourselves a private conversation. Oi. That sounds... At this point, her, her food's, like, kind of half-eaten, but she still kind of stands up, takes in a, uh, another drink of water, and... You're gonna finish that. Oh, too much for me. Uh, Did you have mind? Mind? Um, if you can eat quickly, uh, I do have to get back to the church. He, he's a soldier, so he just oh, no, no. Yeah, as you're walking out the door with her, you're still kind of smacking away, chewing. Uh, she walks out the front door and immediately to the right, staying on the porch. Walks past the, you guys see them walk past the window. She walks to the edge uh, of the porch. I think I need some fresh air. Turns over, turns to you, and mm-hmm. so, what were you wanting to talk to me about? Hey, I got a business proposal for you. Okay. Hit me. I know very little about brown water and the wilderness around it, but you have said some things, along with your skills of hunting and skinning. I believe you know more than I do. Well, well, I'm not much of a hunter or skinner, but I know quite a bit about brown water. Wonderful. Well, uh, I'd like to ply me trade. I'd like to work hard and honest to bring brown water, game meat, and fur. You want honest work? Why? <laughs> I didn't pay you for that type, but all right. Um, how can I be helping you with this? Well, you know the land. You know where possibly the game may be. Well, it depends. Uh, there's a fair few hunters here in Brownwater. Uh, are you looking for something that's going to help you stand out, or are you just looking to hunt some varmints and bring back the carcasses? Plenty of that to be had. I mean, you saw how many gopher colonies are all, uh, out there. My main goal is to make honest profit. It doesn't matter if it be gophers or something larger. Like well, that's... Uh, that would definitely change uh, which direction I, I'd send you, but um, if you're looking for large game that's a bit on the dangerous side, um, there's there's well, a call I'm for a bit that. On the dangerous side myself. Well, um, you'd be heading into lands that uh, most of the hunters don't go into, which would give you a bit of an advantage. But uh, I wouldn't suggest doing it alone. Uh, going with a partner would probably be best, and uh, so you can see I'm. Not much for having your back at this point. Well, you've got time to get better. Uh, if that's what you'd be waiting for, um, you well, could definitely make some money well, with some furs as long as you can, uh, you can get the time. Well, if you're willing to help me out, I'll split the sale with you. Oh, I'll take 25%. Well, we can negotiate that later. Okay. See how much you, you add, how, how much value added you can be. Oh, yeah, uh, plenty much. Uh, especially depending on what outfit I'm wearing. Uh, Go ahead and roll a perception check. Please. I was going to say, I want to try and sneak up and eavesdrop. Okay, so first go and roll a stealth check. <laughs> Well, that's pretty good. Uh, 21. Okay, so you, you guys don't really see him exit as you guys are in conversation. Go ahead and roll a... <laughs> Six. So for all of you, I mean, you're blending with a crowd. You're, you're doing craft work. I mean, true James Bond spy level stuff. Moving through, and by the time you get to them, they're literally walking back inside. So you catch nothing of the conversation. But, uh, she... Well, um... You might be able to convince maybe Fian to go with you. She seemed like she'd know something. Or, or the wee one, the, the little cheer off. I think she'd be damn good at hunting. Well, I got to talk to that wee one too later, but um, I, I, I don't know. Fian, she might eat all the, the, the stuff we hunt. And... Well, she'd probably hunt the things that no one else would want to eat. But um, I heard you mention Wingroom. I'll tell you what. There is something I can do for you, because the man has appetites for um, women with elvish blood, such as myself. 
so I may be able to uh, negotiate for you a slightly higher rate than what you would give a, a typical other hunter. What say you to, to that? If you want to be a business manager, I do all the heavy lifting. You do all the selling. Well, I am the smart one between the two of us, so that would probably be good. That hasn't been established yet. Well, maybe not for you, but we'll catch on. Um, I do have a question, though. Um, would you be wanting to focus on the furs or the meat? Hey, both, if possible. Um, well, what, I, what I'm saying is, is, if you go back out traveling with the uh, with those folk, when you're out and about, definitely worth um, killing the creatures. I mean, you got a few uh, coney puddles on you still, but if you have to consume the meat while you're out there, you don't know when you're going to be back, and you don't have the same... Um, oh, I, I, I'm, I'm not your worst hunter in the world. I know well, how to feed myself. Well, well, yeah, I'm not saying you don't know how to feed yourself. I'm just saying that if you're not like Kerselina over at the, the, the butchery, and you can't make the meat last for a long period of time, it's going to go bad before you can get it to market. But the furs... Oh, that's gonna, that'd still be worth a, bit, a fair bit of coin. Really? I think you identified the more lucrative avenue. But if possible, I'd be selling meat. Well, yeah, but I'd say if you all are out and about as a group, not very viable, but when you're here in town, if you want to take some time to yourself, then definitely. It'd be good. You could get a pool double, get some money for the meat, and get some money for the furs, and if you want uh, the good fur and the good meat, the exotic stuff. Well, when you can get yourself a partner, I'll be telling you where that is. But we'll be joining you on those. Hey, what about when you're when you your arm gets better? If I get my arm better, then uh, maybe for a a fifty percent cut, as quite dangerous so a lot of that is. Uh, the the people of Brownwater, they have um a wide range of taste for a variety of meats. All right. Well, I got some tinker to do. You got some tinker to do. Well, I have some cleaning to do, actually. But uh, you have yourself a good time. Um, if you need me, you know where I'll be. Hi. How she, I stay? She walks down the, uh, the uh, porch. As she does, she kind of looks in the window and catch you, can, uh, you catch eyes with her for just a second. And then she walks down the stairs. When she and she sees me, I'm just going to... Uh, she kind of winks at you when, when you do that. Uh, then walks down the, the stairs and begins heading off a, after Sister Ramudi. That she actually, even with your guys' conversation, she still catches up to her and will assist her the rest of the way back to uh, the Church of Mormon. Uh, I would like each of you guys, except for you because you were not there, to roll me an insight check. Even me? Yes. That sucked. That sucked. <laughs> <laughs> that all sucks. Three. Seven. Seven. Six. Thirteen. Six. Why roll an eighteen? Uh, okay, so the two of you, you very much get the sense that Sister Vermoody's slow movement is about 75% an act. Oh. She puts on the air of an aging woman, but you can see the, the strength behind her movements. You can see that if, if push comes to shove, she'd probably shove pretty hard. Well, then I walk in, oh, them, and, and <laughs> I'm smiling, and I'm saying, well, well I'll be daft. The, the rest of the group is still sitting around the table, except for mm-hmm. Calif, who comes in a, a few minutes later, right? Stomps up the stairs a few minutes later and follows you guys in. So... At this point, with all of you uh, in the common room, the two drunkards have left. You guys actually, besides Norris, have are the only patrons within this place. So there's just you all and Norris. Uh, and Dakin as well, though. Dakin will be uncharacteristically quiet because I'm not going to roleplay his character for him. <laughs> well, sure. I think... Uh, I ate the bacon. You ate the... Damn it. And eggs. Can I left it there? You don't know how much you eat. Some more food if you'd like. No, that's okay. I have to work on my figure. What? <laughs> so, Jim, um, do you know what? Come with me. Come on over. All's over. 
Yeah. Yeah. Soreness is kind of starting to go away now. Now that you've got some food in your belly, you're feeling a bit better and more cognizant. Definitely feel like somebody gave you a concussion. I mean, somebody cracked you one good. Yes. And somebody pissed in your pants. I'm just kidding. <laughs> somebody somebody shit my pants. Which one of you assholes shit my pants? <laughs> But uh, you can take a seat at the table. So it's just the seven of you. Why don't you hold up a minute? Okay. And then afterwards, if you want, you may go with me, and so you can absolve your sins to me. And remember, uh, at the church. I forgot to mention the recap that uh, Elise also wanted to speak to you all today. Elise. I don't want to go to church. I need to speak to Elise. I want to see the fruit. The what? fruit. The fr- fruit. I certainly would like to make a nice appearance. To the community that we are church going folk. Jill, don't go to church. Fine, I'll go. It's like taking a Can this. Jill, don't go. Something feral child like yes, you just... out of the woods after growing up in the woods, and it's like take it into a church. It's like. Now, are y'all done having your little. Yes, gentlemen, okay. what do you want? Let me say that three kind of years real quick. Wait, wait, wait. Mine? Did you yeah. Bacon. Cheers. Not if you want your fingers. Chips are hungry. That's nice. Not it. Can, can, can she have another with him? Norris kind of looks over at you guys for a second. And Slow in the morning, anyway. Come walks up and just drops a pile of bacon. Ah. I feel some of it. Oh. oh, it is far too much for even all of you together to, to, to finish. Cheerful oh. try. Yeah, yes. <laughs> we will give it the old or college try. Beer. <laughs> <laughs> Come on. Pass it over. All right, I don't understand why, but well, start this assembly. I, em- I, I empty out the the, um, the three rounds. The thing is, to your, especially to your standards, he is mistreating this thing. It's like beating a whore. What the hell have you done to this? Uh, uh, well, I don't normally Gentlemen. use whores, just like I don't normally use guns. Start polishing out. So. Go ahead and roll me a gunsmithing test uh, with dexterity. So your proficiency in dexterity. 20? 20, 20. I mean, this is, he's not even looking at the gun. You know this model. Uh, th- uh, this is the Scarn model. This is from the uh, Scarn company. And you know this model very well as your, oh, your, your six guns are Scarn make. So this thing is, you're, you're not even looking. This ain't a bad piece of hardware. Scarred. Serve you good if you don't beat it like a abused, silly mule. Get it out. <laughs> well, then perhaps maybe you should look over the other guns that we've collected so far. I don't mind. You give me a share of selling them, I'm okay with it. I'll take it by a copper bottom this afternoon. Uh, I like okay. the sounds of that. You need to do the talking, though. After you convince that Noel to go shit himself in the street. That was smooth, by the way. Uh, I agree. That is particularly my specialty. Mm-hmm. Who's it would have been great if uh, someone didn't go after him. Well, yeah, I'm thinking with his balls, not his head again. Yeah. And there's oh, his, like, you're right. He's, he's like right balls. here. No, he ain't right here. That's Snowflake. Uh, you can remove from your uh, pack the uh, Gladius. Uh, that's the, the closest thing I can uh, call it uh, is the sword that you guys found. It has no pommel it, uh, or no uh, handguard. It is a blade with a triangular tip on it. It is a very nice make. Uh, oh, may I see that? The two six guns that Egan gave to you, uh, the and then two three guns, a six gun, and, well, 12 rounds that you guys already split up. I'll line them up. Okay. Uh, the, the, especially the, 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 the two three guns and the six gun that you guys uh, got from the, when you were uh, first attacked by the cannibals and then attacked by the actual people going after you that apparently Alara Hell had sent after you, those, those three guns and six guns are not well taken care of. But the other two th- uh, six guns that uh, Egan gave to you are very well taken care I'll of. I'll start cleaning up the crap ones. Why do I see the blade? I guess I just happen to have a, a sack. Well, it, there, it's, a, it's not so much that it didn't fill up your pack. Oh, okay, yeah. I flourished the blade very fancily, checking its balance. It's got some weight to it. I mean, this this may uh, have the stats of a short sword, but it is a chopping weapon. It is not a stabbing weapon. Okay, so it's slash, slash, slash. It's slashing. Yeah, it is a short sword that uses slashing, and it is weighted 
for a heavy slash. Oh. We also have this explorer's pack and some more rope. I guess I'll just hold on to this. Hey, I, I might be able to use the explorer's pack and a rope. Yeah, well, here you go. You could probably make some good traps out of it. Now, back to what I was thinking. What was that thing? Oh, right. Dumbass trying to kill us. So before you talked that Nolan into going for a walk all aimless like, it was pretty set on beating you to a pulp. I know, and I'm not exactly sure why. Well... Insight? <laughs> sure. No, 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 roll a deception. Roll an insight. Yeah. Oof. That's a natural 20. Oh, yeah, that's definitely not uh, so what's the total? Uh, the total is a 25. 25. Well, that beats my 11. Okay. Um... Definitely get the sense uh, he stops for a second. I have no idea. Just it's de there's definitely falsehood there. What can I, I, can I tell? Uh, no, not up here. Uh, can, can, can I tell that he figured? figured <laughs> she, she is so hard to read that <laughs> no, it's Fionn is she's staring at you idly chewing on a piece of bacon. Yeah, Fionn may as well be like a, a little green alien sitting there looking at you. She is it's unpervious. But yes, you not the same of what she got, but you sense he hesitated a bit. Now, I don't understand why you would be holding back. But I don't think you tell him the whole truth right there. Seeing as how I haven't tried to shoot you yet, and somebody just tried to beat your head in. Maybe we could get past this whole me making fun of you and uh, you pretending not to know anything. I honestly don't think I know the per well, Oh, well, the name does sound familiar. Oh, what? she's trying to stop you from talking. So you both are in on it. I don't think they're in on anything. Maybe she just don't want me to get upset. Uh, well, I ain't gonna get upset. Maybe give me a moment to think about what was what was the name again that he said? A lot ahead. A lot, a lot, a lot. What was the name of that leader that uh, we stopped the, the the jail heist from? That'd be a Lara Hell. Oh, the one that I insulted thoroughly good. So, since there's somebody that wants to kill you, I guess my insults rang pretty true. And by extension, well, uh, with your insight on the no, you uh, realized it wasn't there to kill. It was there to send a message. Didn't they say Alara Hell was after us earlier, though? Uh, they said if he was, it's definitely something to watch out for. So there's somebody that wants to beat your head in, since you ain't too good at keeping your head from getting beat in by yourself, yeah. there may be some benefit to you sticking close. Uh, well, I, I am not against that idea. Second of all, somebody tried to kill you all. Probably me too if I hadn't been watching those damn Yule Caps. Maybe we'll all figure that out before we go doing anything else. Cannibals. Well, the cannibals. The cannibals. You know those uh, those guards of the cannibals, guards, whatever you want to call them, uh, they weren't with them even though they seemed to be protecting them. Well, they didn't seem to be protecting them. They, they, they seemed to be there to jump us. So, what he's saying? Someone's trying to kill us. Yes. So, maybe someone's just trying to discourage us from finding out more. Maybe we know a little too much already for their comfort. Happens from time to time. Well, I've made more money in the last fortnight than I made in my whole service in the military. You know, now that I think you about it, wait. Alara Hell was that group that freed one of the, uh, what did they call them? They, they called them the, uh, the, uh, the daydreamers. Mm. I bet Alara Hell has something to do with that and doesn't want us to find out. Maybe we should go have a talk with them. Oh, gentle like. Before or after we mention this to the sheriff. Oh, you mention whatever you want to the sheriff. I'm gonna wander over to the gunsmith for a while. Um, do you want me to go with you to negotiate, as you mentioned before? That'd be good. Okay, yes. Uh, Unless any of you want one of these, I'll clean it up and ask for you. Uh, I guess the one that I had before is fine. Oh, I'm done with that one. Oh. Snap it closed. 
spin it, toss it back to him. Chair already said, Chair want to go top two, at least. Uh, the two six guns that you pull off, the, the good ones, th those are actually cold steel company. Okay. Better quality than... Uh, depends who you ask. I mean, you're, you're a scarn, you, you, know, you like scarn. But, you know, the people who like cold steel, they say it's better. People who say scarn, they say it's better. So, functionally the same. Uh, different styles, different way they're put together, but they function very, very similar. So, Colt and Glock. Exactly. Yeah. Damn cold steel. Trash. They're serviceable if you're into that sort of thing. They want one. one. I'll jump out for this. Me. I guess. Yes? Throw me? No, it's throw me. No, we're They're valuable. You can get some money for it. Why throw it away? It's cheap. Worth a pile of notes. This ain't cheap. That one, that one's cheap. I'm not sure. Never mind. Try to know. Give me bacon duck. Snowflake. You need Don't a new six me. gun? Me. Well, you can have a backup. I've always had this one. Fair My mom enough. gave it to me. But I don't mind going into gun stores, though. Alright, you can tag along mm. if you want, Snowflake. Yes. Thought she was going to go talk to that bald lady. The one on this table I put you up on, Ellis. Yes, but a chick can go to gun on me. Not on the way. Out of the way. We need more ammo. I don't know if you'd be willing, but I'd like to talk to you, Chair, without no. employing the ears of the others. So you don't trust me no more? No. No, let's see what you're doing. I just have some things to express to the wee one. Express. Can't express them around me. Well, what you got to say to Dirt Weasel, you can't say to me. Well, I, I'd like to smooth, smooth the things over. And smooth them. Why, but I think it'd be more meaningful if I, I tell her without the influence of others around. Oh, you want to smooth them. I got you. Oh, no, no, no. no. Chair, don't do different. that. Chair, I'll leave you to your smooth. I don't do dwarves. Well, I'm no. not asking you to, to, to do that. Not this. We want. It's disgusting. I just want to why, talk don't you, to why don't you say it just this? No, this is disgusting. Oh, I'm, I'm going, very Chair going to puke bacon. Chair going to puke bacon now. Well, um. Chair <laughs> back. What, why does go she go to the restaurant? <laughs> she just stands up what? abruptly and no. starts heading towards the loo. I okay. guess she didn't want your smoothing after all. <laughs> well, not when you put Doesn't those ideas in there. Doesn't she have to like, hop down from the chair? Does she have to like hop down from the chair? You'll notice down? that chair took <laughs> handfuls of bacon with her as she was walking Come on. Come grab a piece while wow. she's walking away. There's like a trail of uh, like trips <laughs> of grease following, you know. Why are you taking that to, with you if you're just going to throw it back up? Go with the... Cheer to hold her hair. <laughs> <laughs> she does have a lot of it, so. It is, you will notice that since somebody forced her to wash her hair, the hair is like. <laughs> yes. It is everywhere. It is very puffy, and since it's humid. So we should take a brush to her. Well, when Jim she's that. gone, uh, um, and Cal comes back, I'll say, well, um, Mr. Callis. Uh, yes, sir. Your wee little friend uh, seems not to want to talk to me, so when you've got time, if you're willing, I'd like to talk to you. You don't want to smooth him, too? I, I have some time no. now. Um, I, I, I understand that my compatriot does have some problems sometimes with people. She's a little weird and irrational. I don't know. I mean, he wanted to smooth her. Well, uh, well, fuck. What are your intentions? <laughs> <laughs> I just want when it to comes to that, let me tell you the way. Face to face. And he's turning it into the beast with two box. 
I don't prefer face-to-face -face personal life, but I understand it. I mean, I have no ill intent. Well, around this time, a uh, couple of gentlemen uh, come in. Uh, see you all, they just kind of nod, uh, go up to the bar, they sit down. Uh, is it Toothy Joe and no. Gerald? Uh, it is just, it looks like two minors. Uh, they kind of, they sit at the bar. Whoa! Too much, too much activity in the background. Sorry, right. Sorry, my Damn, everybody's moving. Yeah, you yeah, guys moving too much. Come on. <laughs> Cheeks and seats, guys. Cheeks and seats. All right. <laughs> what do the minors look like? Um... You, these are two miners you guys haven't seen before. Uh, they are relatively dirty. They look like they're flush with cash, but they're sitting at, you know they're sitting there. They well, they kind of see you all you know they're they're cordial, but once they get their food, they both you know kind of prison style over their food and start eating, and they're kind of like lightly talking to each other. They seem to be engaged in the conversation, and they're kind of ignoring you. Just got to town, rough sword. Go and roll me a uh, go and roll me a perception check. 17. Definitely looks like uh, they travel alone. Like they came up from the mines themselves. They definitely have that look. So probably some, probably tougher than most. Um, definitely seem like they're very new in town. I probably arrived yesterday, maybe even last night. Well, we all figure out if you want to leave or not. Let me know. I smell silver. Mm. Offer him some of this bacon. Looks like they can. Uh, Good idea. Well, they're already eating. Oh, I'll offer him some grain juice. Okay. Gentlemen, have you met my friend, Vodka? Oh. <laughs> Sounds foreign, but uh, I'll partake. It got a burn to it. He finishes uh, his uh, cup and sets it in there. Uh, I want you to roll me a perception check as you, as you walk up. Nope. Nope? Okay. Just nope. <laughs> nope. Okay. Uh, he lets you pour it in. So, you seem like you're new to town. Barely. Maybe you want to make some money or have a good time. Depends what you're talking about. See, I like to play a little cards. Oh, I only gamble with my life, never my money. <laughs> that sounds depressing. <laughs> <laughs> when you've got to work as hard as we do to get the silver we do, uh, you tend to protect it. I don't work very hard for silver, but I can understand that impulse. And there you go. But uh, if you want to be playing cards, I mean, I'm sure this place will fill up later. It's still early. Well, I just thought you might enjoy a hand or two before it got crowded and uh, just disproportionate. Here, just here you have breakfast, do some shopping, and then we're going to head back to the mines. Oh, what are you going to buy? Materials. Got to supply them for ourselves. They don't supply us. Oh. Too bad. Yes, I found is. some six guns that are rather nice. I thought you might want one. Being rough sorts like you are. Uh, what you selling them for? Well, there's a gentleman that will help me negotiate as my conversational skills are not the best. Go ahead and hold me a gunsmithing <laughs> check with intelligence. Right. 17, 19. 19. Uh, you know, uh, market value of these guns, uh, you're probably looking at about 120 gold. For, uh, you're talking about the two Colts deal, mm -hmm. so about probably about 110, 115 gold would be, or what would, or what these would fetch, because they're in very good condition. And from what your gunsmith and from earlier, you know, they're actually fairly new too. And the crappy ones? Uh, the uh, the Scarn ones, uh, yep. the the three gun, the no, no, the other six gun. Oh, the other the, the other Scarn six gun yep. is it's it's a fine make, but it's it's kind of been beat up. So, uh, so you might be able to get half market value for that. So and, 55 for that one. Yeah. Uh, and uh, what I say, one one fifteen is that's full market value for each or total. Uh, for each. Hey, uh, Cal, come on over here. These gentlemen would like to buy some of our hardware. Oh, uh, okay, okay. Um, I lean over very quietly and whisper to together. How much are these worth? Cold steel, one fifteen. Uh, one fifty-five. Which one's the cold steel? The shiny one. Oh, okay. Oh, so you, did you put both the cold steel on? Now, this is a cold steel, and this one's a matching cold steel. Matching pairs are nice. Don't see them too often. Oh, oh okay. Um, oh, Again, with your gun spinning one, you know they're from the same artisan. Same man who made this one made this one. Made a similar line. Oh, you know what? Um, uh, what my compatriot here is trying to say is that we can, uh, you can buy both of these together. 
for a nice 250 gold or 250 notes. Oh, you're, you're out of your mind. Uh, I thought you guys were selling for like cheap, like, uh, can't afford that. That is really cheap for these two fine uh, quality. They, they look like fine firearms, but uh, I'll, I'll stick to my scatter gun, thank you. Put the scarred one out. Okay, well, for, this one is not as nice as the other ones. Uh, we could e- we could easily let th- this go for a. Uh, uh, oh, it would really hurt, but uh, sixty gold pieces or sixty notes. You take uh, axe silver too. The other uh, the other guy kind of leans forward. Four thirty one. I'll give you twenty five gold for that one. Ouch. And he puts a sizable chunk of silver on the uh, counter. And does that silver look about 25 gold? Go to roll me a... <laughs> just roll me a straight intelligence check. <laughs> that's a great. I have intelligence, but that's a two. Uh, it looks like a lot of silver. <clears throat> Five's about all I can afford. We got some three guns. You interested in them? Yeah. Might be let those go for twenty-five. Let me see. Bought the three guns. Yeah. Uh, they're 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 so they're on the cold steel make. Is that about the right market value for a three uh, gun? Uh, a good quality three gun, which these are not. Uh, these you'd be lucky to get 10, 15 gold for. So. I mean, typical three gun sells for about fifty to sixty. These 15s, about right? Yeah, I mean, these are pretty beat up. So let them go for 25. Do we have what, three? Uh, the, do you guys have the three guns? You guys have uh, I, two of them. Yeah, I have two three guns down here. So let this pair go for 25. Yeah, yes, uh, th- that seems this seems fair. These two for 25. Pushes the, uh, the lump of silver over. <laughs> Reaches his hand out. Does here. that look like 25? 25 intelligence check? Ten. Ten? Yeah, I mean it's that's that's definitely a lot of silver. I mean silver pieces are, are literally this big. They're they're pretty small. Gold pieces are about that big. That's a lot of silver. And, and that's raw silver, which tends to be a little more expensive than what's in a coin. Because the coin's not pure silver. How easily yeah. could I pick this? Silver? It's heavy. That, that, that's about twelve pounds. With my negative twelve strength. Well, well, what's strength? your strength? At eight. Yeah, so you're kind of oh, oh that's that's got some weight. <laughs> Okay. Yeah, it, it, it's got some weight to it. All right. Thank we'll, you. We'll split that later. Oh, we're going to finish up our... Uh, there, let right. me pour you one more drink, guys. Oh, and you pour it for both? Yeah. yeah. Thank you very much. No, thank you for the hospitality. Thank you for making some business. That way we all have a good day. Exactly. Wander back over and put the lump of silver on the table. See? Not so bad working with us, is it? They go back and you know, continue their conversation in h- more hushed tones. Wait, we should give probably get how to uh, parse that out and sell it for its value. That's a very good question. <laughs> pulls out what a sword? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Pulls out. He pulls out a sword. Wait, no, wait, wait, wait. You're gonna oh, blade yeah. up. You're gonna blade up on that. That that silver. You got to treat your life right. We need to find uh... It was about this time, um, Sheer and Fionn come back in. Fionn is still kind of like holding her hair. Uh, but, uh, about three feet behind uh, Sheer, and she's just kind of looking, kind of playing with it. Like, it's a lot of hair, but <laughs> it's, yeah. I mean, she comes up, and you can see there's several braids all just randomly throughout her hair when she comes up. Uh, you, 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 you have a fin- At this point, you are full to bursting. Jim, feel better. Is her hair falling out? No. <laughs> no. Now, we have some stuff we need to do. Yes. You done throwing up? Yes, as long as we don't mention, don't mention again. Disgusting. Ugh. I'm not sure exactly I what the, he meant no, by smoothing. I don't, I Maybe it was metaphorical. I don't want to know. I, I need to go to Gun and then I need to talk to Elise. You should at least hear what one eye has to say. I need to go to Gun and Elise. Well, she's just making me decision very easy. Come on, listen to her. Ben, what happened to them? 
We'll go for a walk. Come on, Cal. Let's let's find somebody to chop this up. No, I want to go to stay. I want Hat Rack to come with me. But they want to go to stay. She didn't touch. Orfian, I guess. Can we all make our way and talk? Yeah, yeah, they'll catch up in a minute. Come on, Hat Rack. Uh, it'll be okay. I'll put Cal in a headlock and drag him along. With yeah, so he just kind of roughly picks you up. Uh, we'll, we'll be at the, the gunsmith. Yeah. While that's happening and you're doing that, I'd like you to roll me another perception check, Chris. <laughs> nope. Okay. Eight. Okay. <laughs> uh, who, who follows? Can you follow? Oh, uh, the ham and hat rack heading uh, heading to uh, gunsmith. Oh, there's... Yeah. Okay. So you follow? Yeah. Okay. Uh, I'd like both of you to roll me a perception check, please. Yeah, for I'd like you to roll me a perception check. Should I roll a perception? Nope. That was a natural one. 14. 14? As you, you're walking by and they're kind of cajoling and everything, uh, you managed to catch a little bit of the conversation that the uh, two, now two, three guns richer men are speaking about at the bar. All you catch is... In the Kessler homesteads, family's gone missing. Don't know what it's about, but it's a bad omen. Kessler? The Kessler homesteads. Wasn't that the ranchers we just worked for? Creel. So you were one of the three families. Yep. And so was Creel. You Kessler, would know, Creel, and Creel. You would know uh, Kessler homesteads are about a half day's uh, walk south of Brownwood, right here. So anyways, Cal, like I was telling you before I spilled my vodka. But we'll get to your conversation real quick. Uh, so Cheer and One Eye, you all find yourselves sitting uh, at the now very empty, very large table. Just the two of you. Dakin has gotten up and excused himself. He is going to be heading uh, back to the Church of the Morning Light as it seems uh, conversation has died off. So, what do you do? All right. I want to talk to you, and I have some things to say, and I hope you take them in the right way. Are you willing to listen? Now, like I mentioned before, even though I don't fully trust you and Carl, Darius, and Fjall, I recognize that there's value in working with you. And this is my way of trying to work with you. I'm willing to cover your back with me daggers. If you're willing to cover my back with your pistol, I haven't figured out how you do what you do, but I won't deny that it's pretty powerful. Now, you might be able to talk to Cal like you're his boss take his money like you're the treasurer, but if we're going to work together, I don't respond to that. But I'm here to ask you if you're willing to try to work with me. Making sure my hands are above the table. Okay. What, Cal? Cheer is willing to work with Dorf. Well, it'd go a long way if you use my name. But these again, Cheer didn't pay attention to this time. Well, we've so got a way to go then. They call me Monoy. Ah, clever. <laughs> it's very easy. <clears throat> easy to remember. <laughs> oh, I wish I was there now. You you actually hear Norris just <laughs> just, just kind of like, <laughs> when, when you say that. The most emotion you've shown. Yes. No, 
know, I like to hear more than a very terse and labored communication. There's a lot that I still don't know behind that veil of rage that you're sending over me way. I can see it in your face. I know you don't like me. <laughs> no, Jeff don't. Yeah, then I can't trust you to have me back. If you won't at least try. Serious trying. Good. Like Jeff said, or Cal, Jeff Oh, I, I'm not concerned with Cal. I'm concerned with me on back and let her you know, shoot me in it. Or do she won't shoot you unless you hurt Jeff or Cal. Well, I, did, I, may some, that. I may say some smart things towards you. Don't say it. That's not hurting you. If you get hurt by it, you need thicker skin. Or Dorf just learn manners. Wait, no. you tried done. that before and it don't work. Not really. All you really hear from you is sarcasm. So, would that be a no then? No, Jim work with you, but maybe, maybe, Mr. One Eye well, learn a little was... better manners. Get to know each other. I think this will work out just fine. Cheer now have to deal with old acquaintance about fruit. Okay, well, you you want me to help you out? This is me yeah. trying. I don't know what you all have planned today. Maybe talk to giant man. No, excuse me. Off the table. Try not to push the dice. I know, I know, try not to. But it's like, get up and then just. Thank you for bacon. Very mm. delicious, very full. Master bacon. Mm. Can you, you see who has the table? No. The he's, he's tall. He's, he's like really six, seven, six, seven, six, eight. He's mm -hmm. pretty tall. Also, how does a toddler shoot a six gun and be so sassy at the same time? You, you, you're man. watching it. <laughs> <laughs> you're seeing it happen. So, uh, when, after she gets up and leaves, uh, where are you headed? Oh, I'll walk over to the table that yeah. Darius is sitting at. Uh, well, Darius followed them. Okay, then I'll, I'll walk out the door. Yeah. And, um... I don't know where they went, so... Uh, you heard them heading to the gunsmith. Uh, you've heard there's only one in town. Okay. I'll mosey over to them. And real quick, uh, where are you heading straight to Elise? Gunsmith first to grab him. So you guys are headed literally the same yes, direction. Yes, but as I'm walking, I will be doing fiddling the stuff to activate the uh, speed. Okay. So then, Just be like so, you, so you get a very clear view of her pull a small vial of yellow liquid out of uh, her belt pouch. Uncork it, drink it, cork it, put it back in. And after a few seconds, suddenly uh, her walking speed that, that you've seen, which is about as fast as yours, almost doubles. Though she doesn't appear to be putting any more effort into it. I, I, to myself, I'm like, well, you know, she may be hard to deal with, but definitely has tricks in her bag. Do I hear him? Hey, so, real quick, uh, we're going to go ahead and take a, a five, ten minute break. We're going to walk around, you know, when we're not on camera. Uh, stretch our legs and get something to drink, okay? So, uh, give us about five, ten minutes. We'll be right back. Stay with it. Stay with us. Uh, I'm going to try and set that up. Like that. You got it? Yeah.
quick before we get back into the game. Uh, we have we do have another new subscriber with the name of Lost Waffle. Sir, thank you very much for uh, sir for subscribing. Madam. Sir or madam, sorry, sir or madam, or however you identify, I guess. Uh, maybe it's a toaster. Uh, Lost Waffle, love the name, though it's got to be the absolute saddest username I have ever seen. Waffles are meant to be eaten, not lost. I'd pour one out for you, but I, I don't want to get my table wet. <laughs> all right, so... With all of you to varying degrees making your way uh, to the uh, gunsmith. Yeah, where'd you go? I don't know. I should just keep this out because that would probably make my life much, much easier. So, as you guys are heading to Water Valley Firearms, I'm dragging Cal along like a varsity football player. Ooh, do I catch up with him? <laughs> okay. Does it pass by Silver River by chance? Uh, no, uh, actually, no, it does not. And, uh, mm -hmm. since you guys now have been in Brownwater for long enough, I am gifting you all something that you guys can actually use. This is a map of the town of Brownwater. Ooh. This is now your all personal map. It has the location ah. names on the back of it for you. Uh, keep it in the sleeve. You guys can, write, you can draw on this. There's uh, important locations that will be that are on this map that are not marked that you guys can end up marking yourselves. Okay. So you can actually see where uh, the uh, Silver River is, which is uh, the other direction. Do you, would you like to go by there first? Yeah. Yeah, because uh, if you want to go to Silver River, you would uh, exit out of uh, the Welcome Member Inn and take a left. If you want to uh, uh, go to the Water Valley Firearms, you would head straight down the street to the south from the DMV. So which one did you want to do? Silver River. Silver River? Okay. So you come up and around and make your way uh, towards uh, Silver River. Okay? Uh, we'll get to you in just a second. So the rest of you at uh, Water Valley Farms, as you all walk in, a bell chimes from the door itself uh, uh, overhead. You can see today there's only one other person inside. Uh, you can see, uh, looks like he's kind of dressed up, dressed very similarly to, uh, to Cal in his normal dress, though he has a bowler hat on his head, twirling a very curly mustache with one hand as he goes down and around the display cases that have a variety of various firearms from three guns, six guns, scatter guns, lash guns, uh, the purse guns. There's a couple of others. Do I see a set of guns, perhaps, that are on sale in the case of um, similar quality to the ones? I'd like you to roll me a perception check real quick. Okay. Curly mustache and a bowler hat and horns. The pistol is that you? I'm sorry, I'm sorry, not first gun. Wrist guns, uh, and you do see a uh, board gun. 16. 16? Yes. Uh, looking around, these firearms seem to be of super fine make. I mean, wow. And all of these appear to be completely custom made. And any prices on them? There are no prices on them. There are no prices displayed. Though there is a, a small plaque of each one going into the variety of different practices that went into making it, the different materials it's made of, and overall stylized and probably maybe even kind of fluffy a kind of a description of the piece. Good afternoon, or good morning. Uh, you just see him in the area right now. Yeah. You don't see anybody else. <coughs> uh, he appears to be uh, just a customer. Oh. Copper bomb! You hear uh, some noise in the back. Door opens up, and you see a very wild, red-haired, dwarven woman. Short for a dwarf, round for a dwarf, and heck so much hair on that head. 
I mean, it is. She has two full, like, what, what normally one person would have is one braid, like one very ornate braid on the back of their head. She has on both sides of her head. You can see that she also has a bit of whiskers growing that are very long, probably five or six inches long growing out of her chin. Uh, and she has very red bloodshot eyes. She throw, pulls the door open, looks out, and, hey, it's Button, damn it! Copper Button! Yeah, yeah, Copper Bottom. She kind of looks at you, steps in the door, slams the door behind her, walks up, and, what? So, that's Hat Rack, Calif, Calif Hat Rack. That's Jared. Well, well, uh, not not quite like, uh, but he introduces you as you come in, and then Snowflake and What Eye. Oh, uh, uh, yeah, yeah, One Eye. I come uh, in last. So yeah, like way less. Okay, uh, I'll wait by the door for him. Wow. <laughs> okay. Uh, the man in the bowler hat seems to just kind of ignore you as he's perusing. Uh, she. Now that you're, you're, that she gets up much closer to you than she was the last time, you can see her face is also covered with freckles. I mean, there's barely a hair's width of flesh in between most of the freckles on her face. They are everywhere. And they can travel from her neck, or her face down to her neck, and you can see them on her shoulders. She's wearing a, what appears to be bedclothes. Look, I'm over. You okay? Why are you here? Guns! Yes. We, we come up so okay. so. What? Put them out. So we got these two cold steels here. And then this one, uh... Scarn. 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 We're looking at sell off. Well, these two look to be in good, uh, good shape. I'll give you 40% market value. That other one's a giant piece of shit. I'll give you five, uh, five notes for it. It was worth more than five notes. Well, it's not. It's worth less than that to me. But I might be able to just get some parts out of it. Take it or leave it. So what's forty percent of market value for these to you? Uh, I'll tell you what. Make it a nice round number. I'll give you a hundred notes for the three. So at one fifteen each. Carry the ten. <laughs> So that's two thirty for the cold steels. That one there is at least worth fifty. So that'd be two eighty. So half of two eighty. Drop the six. One forty. It's a hundred notes or nothing. You want it? It's a hundred notes. How about a hundred notes? And um, I understand you have some fine ammunition. All right. Can we throw in some of that as well? No. Well, you can uh, buy plenty. If you want to trade these for ammo, I'd be fine with that. Why don't you go sell them to that? That, uh... That agent well, with the job. Just roll me an inside check, both of these. You guys are directly talking to her. <laughs> what is the deal with my rolls today? Uh, insights. Uh, that would be a 12. 12. Um, you you don't really pick up on it. I mean, you've never met this one before. Uh, this is not the woman you met yesterday. I mean, there. This is night and day. Her attitude is completely different. And your thing about hungover doesn't seem right, but there's definitely something up. So, what's wrong with you? Come on, out with it. Do you want it or not? I want to know what's wrong with you so I can help. That way you can get back to being your cheerful self, and I can get using that gunsmithing room. Don't roll me a persuasion check. The disadvantage. Oh, I wanted to be persuasion. Nope. <laughs> That's a zero. Okay. See, look, I just want to go back to sleep. Do you want it or not? We can trade for ammo. We can. I can give you a hundred notes right here, right now. But any more talk? Any more haggling, and I'm just going to smother you. In the big one, my life being smothered, he seems like the type of the... I'll shoot you, Snowflake. I'm not talking to you, white hair. 
times when she turns back to you two. So which one am I talking to? Well, uh... You then. Yes. All right, purple one. Hunter knows. Or do you want ammo? Why don't we see if that general store man wants... <laughs> Can I ask you about this here boar gun? Put him away. Yes, yes, I do. What do you want to know about it? There's a, she only has one in stock of that. And go ahead and roll me a gunsmithing with intelligence. Nine. <laughs> um, you don't recognize most of the material that's actually been inlaid into it. The only thing that you recognize is uh, the pommel itself looks to be made of pure ebony. It's the only thing you recognize. Like, not an overlay, not a piece, like a literal block of ebony that she has molded into a handle. That ebony? She walks around, like literally just stands up a little bit and plops her prodigious breasts upon the, uh, the glass case, gives a sigh of relief from the, the relief of the weight from her back. Nothing but the best. You want to describe her to me? You nearly jump back as you realize this glass case, it's glass top, sides, and on the bottom it's literally sitting on what appears to be an ironwood shelf. Mm -hmm. She reaches through the glass and you see her hand just pass through the glass on the back side. Grab the firearm and pull it back and she puts it on top of the glass. That's freaky shit right there. She looks up and... Yeah. Now, and she holds it up. Do you have money? Or am I getting wasted my time? How much money are we talking about? Well, this here is uh, 12,000 gold. You're wasting your time. That's what I thought. And uh, the man comes up and... Um, I'm sorry, uh, I know this gentleman is uh, talking to you, but um, uh, please, miss, uh, I have my eye here on this latch gun. Uh, what is this strange contraption on the top of it? She puts the, uh, the st still sticks her hand straight through, but it sets down the, uh, the, the board gun, and then walks back around now, ignoring you all. As you guys are looking around, you, you've never seen firearms like this. You're not much of a firearm guy, but you know quality when you see it. Like, it's like, that looks expensive. Like, that looks like if I broke it, I would be in debt forever. Yeah. Uh, she walks around, and she does the same, reaches two hands through the glass, pulls up the latch gun, puts it on top. Well, you see this. This is what uh, they refer to as an optical sight. Okay? Fairly new technology, and I thought, well... Wouldn't it be great to be able to see targets that are closer, that are far away, make them appear closer so they're easier to hit? So this is uh, my second try at this, and it's pretty damn accurate, I have to say. And I'm like, oh, well, well Miss, uh, what were you looking for, for for that? Well, this uh, this is 15,000 gold pieces. Just, oh, all right. And reaches into inside his uh, vest, pulls out. All of you guys roll me a... Uh, Go, yeah, just go to make it a perception check. Hey, a good one. Eight. 16. 16? 18. 18? 15. 15. 11. 11? That's an 8. 8? Okay, so everybody but here recognizes She's this. Good. You guys use Barrage and Mix. You guys have seen them, okay? This is a Barrage and Script. Pulls it out. Writes upon it the amount. 15,000 gold, hands it to her. She kind of... Mm -hmm. uh, even that doesn't seem to brighten her morning. She, all right. It's hers. It's like, oh, I'll need some ammo for it, won't I? Yeah, well, just reaches in and grabs, like, a small uh, box, removes 10 rounds of the box, just kind of haphazardly tosses them into a satchel, closes it up, and here. All right. Oh, well, thank you, um... To the best gunsmith in the south. Uh, and like, yeah, 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 yeah. Anything else? And, oh, oh, so sorry. And he takes the latch gun, takes the ammo, and walks out the door. Nice. You hear the bell, ching, 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 and she closes it. She takes that and slips it in nature's pocket between her breasts, for those of you who didn't get that. It's nature's pocket. So, yeah. What, can I go out just a little bit? 
Windows to see, just to pretend like I'm against the wall, but like to see where he goes. Uh, sure. Uh, when you open the door, that bell chimes. See him kind of look back and. You just like stand there and just like look at something in my pocket like that, but okay. kind of like observing. Roll me, roll me a deception check. Oh, crap. <laughs> gonna be fine. <laughs> it's a joke. So as you walk out, um, and he turns and looks at you, you literally go, oh, I'm being nonchalant looking in my pockets. Yeah. And yeah, you see him kind of narrow his eyes and immediately quicken his pace, uh, walks up uh, to where the ember end is and walks straight into the ember end. You see him sit down at the table. Well, I and don't follow the, him. I just... No, no, no. Yeah, from where you are, you see him sit down at the, at the table inside, and he's looking out the window, and he's looking right at the... to see if he was followed. Following. Just standing there. No, very, try, the trying to be nonchalant with that, like, oh, yeah, that's so, so nonchalant. <laughs> yes, yes. Okay, so you guys back inside? So can I... I rent that workspace now. <sighs> Workshop... Workshop doesn't open until store closes. You come back here at about four o'clock. You work till nine, and you get the fuck out. You understand? You're real cheerful in the morning, ain't you? Oh, goddamn right I am. Oh, God's damn right I am. So, money. Well, I come back. Oh, right now, if you want to rent the, rent the space out, it's first come first serve. Here, five. Okay, fine. All right, we'll piss off now. Oh, thank you. You guys leave and... Oh, I need Cheers. one more round, though. Here. For what? The special rounds. Oh, okay. Oh, oh, oh. that type or you... You want that type or you want a different type? What else you got? Well, right now, I got myself uh, a few other types uh, that I just finished making up yesterday. Uh, I got my surefire rounds. I got the, my, some rip fire rounds and some howlers. What do rip fire rounds do? Uh, well, they, they uh, and she pulls one out, and bullets are dangerous. Just looking at this thing, you think you're going to cut yourself. It has holes that have been drilled into it, and inlaid into each hole appears to be, you're not so sure of the material, but almost like a, a, a shard that when it would hit, it would shoot into the target and probably just rip the target apart. How much is those? Uh, well, these are 10, ten notes a piece. Damn. Well, Howlers? Uh, well, she, uh, well, hold on a second. And she grabs a piece of, like, reaches down and grabs a piece of wood and sets it on the glass. And you can see what looks to be about half an inch thick of mahogany. And you see in the center of it where uh, there's a small hole about that big. She, she turns it around. And on the back side, you can see where the shards actually came out and just literally ripped the back half of this thing up. Looks like it do quite a bit of damage. My own design. She puts it down. Ten notes. You want howlers? Howlers are two notes a piece. Well, just know that they're not as accurate as they could, they could be, but they're not used for that. What are they used for? Well, yeah. she pulls out a... She reaches in, into the glass. At this point now, you all see it. She literally sticks her hand through the glass, grabs a six-gun that she has, opens it up, puts one round into it, closes it, aims at you, then aims up and shoots through the roof of the place. And when she does, it sounds like a shrill as it goes up. That could probably be heard for half a mile in every direction if it didn't destroy the bullet from hitting the, hitting the wood. But as it first exits, you guys can hear what sounds like an animal screech. Hmm. Ours. Hmm. Who goes that? Well, you need uh, to alert someone. Raise this in the air, you shoot, and they know what's coming. So why don't you give me a, a six hours? With 12 notes. And six of those rip rounds. 60 notes, so uh, 72 notes. Carry the five. Strip off 72 notes. Well, I'm broke. Mm. Let's go to that general store and sell these here guns. Yes, yes hold on. Um, I would like uh, three of those. Rip, rip, uh, well, I got uh, ten left. That's all I got left right now, and I'm not you know, looking at making any more stock of that for a while. So, do you want them? Now's the time to get them. If 
I get them, will you throw in a couple of those howlers for free? I'll if you get all ten, I'll throw in two howlers. Okay. Rip off, uh, or get, 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 get a stack of hundred notes. She puts uh, the ten rounds in, mistakenly puts one howler on there, goes to put a second, and goes, you know what, I think one's good enough. What do you say? You said two. Roll me for a persuasion check. So that is a 17. She seems like she's going to argue the point for a second, but she sees that you kind of flash that smile of yours, and she... I said to put a second one on there. Well, I certainly hope that these are worth it. Oh, they are. I'll get you guys out of cards made for those, uh, for those in particular. Uh, we won't do one card for one round. Well, you guys will just write the number of rounds on the card itself, because that's just too much for well, the yeah, cards. That, uh, uh, I, I'm, I'm in the process of making those. Uh, oh, uh, oh. The magic set in they have uh, ammunition cards. Oh, no, no, that's what I'm talking about. Uh, but uh, these rounds, uh, rip fire rounds, add a D4 to every attack you make with them. But they raise the misfire rate by one. Three guns still do not have an explosive misfire if they roll a one with these rounds. Um, uh, howlers uh, do not increase. Uh, 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 the uh, damage. Uh, no, they don't increase the uh, misfire rate, but they can be heard up to 500 yards away. Uh, you can even wake people up with them, depending on how far away they are. Grand surefire rounds remove misfire chance completely. So even if you have uh, explosive misfire on the one, those rounds will never explosive misfire. Do you want some of these, Jeff? Okay. That's six. Yeah, I am completely broke now. That was right nice of you to buy me four rip rounds. She has a bigger caliber than. That was right nice of you to buy me one. Oh, she has the board gun for her pistol, right? Yeah, the board gun. What about not pistol? Uh, she saw, well, she just sold the one latch gun she has. She has two scatter guns in stock. She has a few uh, three guns. She has a few six guns. She has a single wrist gun. Gun. Uh, it's a smaller weapon. It's literally designed. They, they call it the wrist gun because you can literally hide it in your wrist. You can literally put it on a sheath in your hand, pull it out, and fire. Mm. I like the sounds of that. But uh, maybe later. The one that she sells has a what mechanism that it attaches right. to, so you can wrap it around your wrist. Holds three. You can, hold six. You can push it and you like. Extend your hand out quickly, it'll sure come out of it to its uh, me sheath, so you I can will. quickly grab it and fire. Okay. You're a good gal. Either way, he's gonna wait till she's less agitated and not busy to uh, walk up to her. And, um, well, well if she waits for you all to walk out. Uh, well, actually, she doesn't do that. If nobody else calls her attention, she goes, she opens the door and, and walks back into the back room again. General Stork. General Stork. Darius walks over to her. Actually, walking away like, uh, what? He just uh, grabs a holster and just kind of like attaches it because it's not like moved onto the belt. He just, I'm not going to draw it in such a store out of respect, but this is getting made by my mom. And um, it's a bit modified, but the thing is, you want her name etched in on it? Not that. I just want uh, to know what you think of it in general. It's got markings that I can't read. You're done. Smith. She immediately picks it up, empties around out of it, starts looking around it. Uh, well, where are you? Oh no, you're not there. Mm. And Dakin's not there. So she looks at you. Well, they look pretty, but if they say anything, I have no idea what they're saying. I'd find someone that reads this gibberish. If it's saying anything at all. I mean, it just looks pretty to me. Well, it's the same type of language that's, that mom walked on to me, so I uh, was just, just wondering if somebody you'll trade might be able to tell me. Uh, well, don't know what it says, but uh, I can definitely do a lot to it if you got the money. What could you do to it? 
Oh, well, I could lengthen the barrel, give you a little more accuracy. I could lighten the wheel, put in a, uh, use a better material. I could get you some actual sights that'll work so you can shoot straight. Uh, I can uh, loosen up that trigger a bit so it's not like trying to pull a dog back in heat. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> But uh, I would say Darius probably does a snicker at that. Uh, but uh, you got money. I mean, she. Uh, have you left at this point? You guys yeah, are already still waiting for them. Uh, your friend there, a bit of a gunsmith. So I've seen some of his work. I mean, he may be able to help you out with that. I do top quality work, and I charge a top quality price. I mean, and she just does this, and yeah, I mean, just from what you've seen, it's amazing. How much would it cost to get this damn fitting that was put into it for a blade? Is like that it. what that is? It is. I mean, I... This is an unholy thing that has happened to this weapon, and I can remove that for you. He, like, you see him kind of like, as if he hears something or whatever? And nobody else hears him, I just hear, NO! <laughs> just like... <laughs> How much would it cost? Uh, it'd take me 10 minutes. She looks o o over you and looks at your bare chest. You do some sweeping for me and I'll do it for free. Fair enough. All right. I'll give you a hand. Uh, she looks at all of y'all. Go away. I, I help with it, though. Go away. It looks like you kicked a puppy. <laughs> you follow one eye and yeah, right. the night. So you all leave uh, Darius. You have to deal with this woman leering at you the entire time, making noises every time you even remotely bend over. You just, mm, 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 mm. Like, <laughs> just objectifying you like you never had before. And d despite how you are a tough, strong man, it kind of gets to you a little bit. I would say that you think it has confidence boost Oh, oh no, in the beginning it is, but the level of aggressiveness that happens to it does make you feel just a little dirty at the end. But uh, fucking orc prostitute. Uh, well, you know? she remi it, it reminds you almost of that night. Uh, but she but removes she she removes the uh, the housing for that, so that thing will not slide in anymore. And she actually also for that oh, it removes the the barrel that you had and replaces it with one of the uh, the uh, oh no you didn't sell those because uh, you guys talk too much <laughs> uh, but she uh, picks up a fairly cheap looking barrel and replaces the barrel that was on it because it actually appears like it's a little bent mm. from you know the, the force of uh, swinging that thing around so now you have a much better six gun that ha doesn't have that you know that useless piece on it for you and then hands it back to you. Uh, doesn't even the thing is, even as she's objectifying you, she still seems like she's in a pissed off mood. And I would like you, now that you're close enough, see, to roll me an inside check. Skills, 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 inside. Uh, plus zero. Plus zero. <laughs> a three. Okay. <laughs> um, you're not. Yeah, she's she's just a shitty person. She's just a bitch. That she comes off to you. But she, uh, you know, after probably about half an hour, she hands that back to you. So a lot more sweeping than what, she, than what you were thinking it was. But you clean the place up a bit. Uh, so while you're doing that and getting your, your, your gun fixed or your firearm fixed, what are the rest of you doing? Going over to the general store. Yeah. store. Uh, so are you guys going to? Yes. I'll leave. Splitting off to go to Mr. Wingrun's scissors. Okay. So are you guys headed uh, to uh, the, uh, let me see, Brighton's Goods? Is that the one that carry firearms? Uh, it could be. Yeah, I mean, depending on, like, Brighton is very much has a uh, amorphous stock. It all depends on what's in stock. More than Wingrum would? Uh, well, Wing Wingrum is just leathers and that stuff. No. Yeah, he doesn't sell them. Uh, or if you, need, uh, if you need a shave or if you need a uh, haircut. Yeah. Or if you need surgery. Right. 
Brighton? Okay. Uh, you have actually talked to Brighton before. Uh, you know uh, Brighton is over six feet high. He's not too skinny, but he's fairly skinny. Uh, he's got a bald pate, and he's got hair, you know, thinning brown hair like a crown on his head. He wears very nice clothes that are always dirty. Always seem to be mud spattered, as you know, Brighton's Goods sits right where Squatter's Plot begins. And just that muddy earth that's just there all the time just seems to get everywhere. As uh, you walk in, there's a couple of other people in the store. Uh, you know that the way uh, Brighton has his store set up, it's actually, as you open it up, it's the counter is right in front of you. I mean, it's five feet into the building, and all of his stock is behind the shelves. So apparently he has learned that shoplifters are a thing. As he sees you all enter, me. Hey, how y'all doing? Oh, I'm doing pretty well. Um, we have this chunk of silver that, uh, I understand it's 40 gold worth, that we'd like to sell. Um, well, you're gonna want to go down the street, right over to the creditors' union. Oh, okay, okay. Well, thank you for that. Um, we also do have uh, some quality firearms that we have acquired that perhaps maybe you would like to look at. Uh, I can do trade. I uh, don't have much in the way of uh, fresh notes on me, but I'm willing to trade if you are. Hmm, trade does sound good. Oh, uh, looking around to see what he has. Let's see what you got. Put the six guns on the counter. And, and the and the, uh, the cheap six well, gun, too. Got a yeah. cheap scarring piece of shit. We got a couple of good cold steels here. Uh, tell you what, uh, store credit? 300? Mm. Oh, no, no, no. I can't do that, but I'll give you half market value on those. That's fair. So. Probably better than what you're going to get from. Uh, 150 grand. Half um, market value be. Uh, that, that'd be about for both of them. And this piece, I mean, I'll give I'll give you 15, 15 for the scar. Uh, but the other ones, uh, I'll give you uh, 70, 70 notes a piece. So call it call it 150 total for the four. Of them. How about we do 140 and I keep the scar? That's fine. Me, push it. See, I'll take these. He, he immediately the picks them up, goes into his shelf, and puts them right on the shelf. Rations. Uh, you, you've been calm down. Ra oh, yeah, so uh, iron rations. You all looking for, uh, I, I got I got a fresh shipment in uh, of dried fruits. Ooh, uh, I, I, do like I, I know, I know. Cheer and drink. Okay, well, what else do you have here? What do you need? Cash. Well, I don't have much of that. How much do you have? Uh, I don't know if I don't really feel comfortable with sharing that with you, but not enough to give you cash for those firearms. Not all of it, just some of it. We'll give you 10 notes. And 130 in credit? 130 in credit. Done. All right, he puts a, a single 10 note bill on the table, or on the uh, counter in front of him. What you got for liquor? Uh, don't really sell much in the way of liquor. More, uh, more other supplies. Uh, uh, to be perfectly honest, I used to sell it, but the fucking wagoners coming in and selling it on the cheap. Browns. Oh, uh, I got some. I got some browns for you. How many? How many you need? How many you got? Uh, he, give me a second. He walks in the back and he kind of disappears uh, in, into the shelves, and you hear him rustling really stuff around. Rounds. We, we got plenty of those. Never have enough rounds. King, 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 king. Gentlemen, I point. Rations. Rations. Ah, all right, here we go. He comes back, and he's got himself like a small wooden box, puts on the table, and uh, you looking for a three or six gun, you looking for a latch gun, or are you looking for some shells? Well, I wouldn't mind an actual latch gun. Uh, I think I got one of them in stock, actually. How much uh, you want for it? Well, I mean, that's going to heat up all of your credit and then some. Match guns. I'll just get them. What about back. the? Uh, I mean, what about rations? The, the spread around for the uh, rest of us. Latch gun. That's what I heard. Latch gun. Latch gun. Uh, Lashes. Latch gun. Big gun. He goes, yeah. I'll kill animal. Eat he, animal. He picks latch. up a. He picks up a latch gun. It's. You can. You immediately see it as cold steel. Is it? He puts it on. He puts it on the counter. Go to roll me a gunsmithing intelligence. Uh, ten. Good enough. Um, yeah, this thing is this thing is probably third or fourth hand, and it's been around for a while. This gun is probably older than you are. How much is it worth? 
with a 10, I mean, that, that that's tougher. I mean, a market value latch gun, you're looking at 400 gold for just a, I mean, bare bones latch gun. I mean, kind of iffy quality for the most part. I mean, this one, if he sold it, you wouldn't be surprised if he won 500 for it. How much you want for it? 450 notes. Yeah, never mind. So we're going to need some rations. All Take right. that dried fruit. Oh, yeah, and... Yes. Um... He was talking up a big game. He got a you know fresh thing of uh, dried fruit in, and he grabs a small little box with maybe a day's worth of dried fruit, puts it on in there. Quality stuff right there. Ten notes. Five. Two. Eight. Wrong way. Wrong way. <laughs> Well, we're all over the place, so who am I talking to? Uh, me. Two ten. Oh, how, how about eight? Yeah. I'm willing to let it go for eight. Okay. Eight, eight for the rare. It's rare, and it's, you, you can see it, it's maybe two days worth of rations, and that's it. Okay, eight. Okay. Eight. All right. Get the bullets and the tobacco. Uh, iron, tobacco. you said you had iron rations. Uh, uh, yes, I do. I got some dried meat. How much Water. would, uh... 20 notes get us? Uh, depends. You want uh, the edible stuff or you want the tasty stuff? The tasty stuff. All right. Well, let me see here. He lo- starts looking around. Okay. Call it a note a day. And I got about 20 days worth. Okay. Uh, for, the, for the tasty stuff. You want the cheap stuff. And uh, get you a, a note will get you two days. Okay. And I got about 20 days of that, too. Okay, uh, well, let me go ahead and get all of that. If I get all of that, uh... Are you planning a trip somewhere? Uh, you never know. Uh, no. Sometimes. Uh, oh, 25 notes for all of them. For, for the 20 days of both. So you want a 15-note discount? I'll tell you what, I'll give you a 5-note discount. Oh. About 35 for the lot. Okay, 35. All right. Uh, Back up. Uh, 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 what? Yeah, you yeah, might as well get some tobacco for, for uh, uh, I'm sorry, what? Cam Goss. Cam, can what can somebody help me translate? Uh, uh, what kind of chemicals do you have? Oh, um, uh, I got some turpentine. Uh, that's about it. I mean, I don't really sell much in the way of chemicals here. Uh, be, how yeah, much we use? can go, go see our alchemist friend later. Um, yeah. So the, let's see here. How much tobacco? I am sure that you're probably going to share some of this with uh, Darius. Oh, uh, you look for chewing or smoking? Yes. All right. Uh, let's see what I got. How much you want? And how, how many? Well, hold on a second. How many of these bullets you want? I'm not leaving these on the counter. How much you want for them? Uh, for what? What section of it? I mean, I got latch gun ammo, which you know doesn't fit. Three gun and six gun. Three gun and six gun. Oh, let me see. Uh, I got 100 rounds. How much? Uh, well, uh, typical Notes. market value on this uh, usually runs you uh, about two silver a round. So out here, you're looking closer to five silver a round. How hard it is to get. So at 100, call it, call it 50 notes. Okay. Try 20. 50 notes. Lying about how much you demanded it. Well, inside check. While they're doing that, they would know. Um, I mean, Darius is like finally done like a pat down or whatever after he's done cleaning stuff. He finds a receipt for the uh, the chain maker. So he starts heading that direction to find out what okay. he has a receipt for that. Okay. Ten. Ten? <laughs> You, you don't really know the market value. I mean, you leave that stuff to Cal. Mm. Do I know the market value? Go and roll a straight intelligence check. Natural 20. This is the first time you guys have actually tried to purchase rounds while in brown water. Yeah, you know, he's about right there. Of a typical round, I mean, firearms are still relatively expensive. They're mainly military people use them. I mean, you may have a family have a single latch gun, uh, you know, to defend themselves with, with maybe a dozen rounds in it. They're still 
still expensive things. Uh, he's about right on the market value, about two silver a round. That's about right. So you can get about five rounds for, for a note. Out okay. here, I mean, it makes sense. Uh, you haven't seen a whole lot of caravans coming down here with, with material. With how many people out here, I mean, squatter squats dangerous as hell. Vigor Ridge is dangerous, and there's a lot of dangerous people around. Yeah, they probably that's probably a fair market for them. I'll, I'll still scoff at it and be like, okay, okay. We'll do 50 if you insist. I do. All right. Okay, uh, so let's see here. We're up, what are we up to so far? Here at seven. Divide by six. So, no. Well, eight five, no. So you're at 50, you're 50 for the ammo. You're at 35 for the rations. Uh, 10 for what he gave you out of the 140. Uh, Maddie, what else have you guys uh, picked up? The tobacco. He hasn't given a price of oh. it. All right, so he takes the rounds, puts them out. Right. Uh, for tobacco, I mean, you're looking at maybe I got for uh, the, the mouth stuff, that terrible crap. Uh, I got a, a pouch worth. How much? He holds it up. Uh, you, you, as a true, an average yeah. viewer, uh, you know, it probably lasts you about maybe two weeks. Like, uh, call it five notes. All right, put that on there. Okay. Smoking tobacco. No, uh, it pulls up. I want you to go to roll me a person. Oh, he's not there. You're not there. That's correct. Uh, but you, uh, you don't smoke. You really only smoke drugs. No, yeah, you're just I, smiling. I'm not there. Oh, you didn't follow the eternal story. That's right. You went to Wonder and Scissors. Okay, so uh, the people who are there currently. Um, you don't really know a whole lot about tobacco. Which one tobacco? He's, he puts up a couple of different kinds of leaves, and says, "Well, I got the regular stuff here, but I got this premium stuff. Uh, really good stuff. Real smooth. Real nice. Doesn't stink up the place too much. Uh, that's gonna run about. I mean, if it's the same amount that you would shoot, you have maybe a week or two to supply within that. So uh, that'd be twenty notes for that one. Or if you want the cheap stuff, same as that, five notes." Can okay, I lean over and smell it? Go ahead and roll me a just uh, roll me a perception check. Uh, perception. Right? Yeah. Nine. Nine. It smells good, but I mean, you, to you it's tobacco. I mean, it doesn't stink as bad as dairy. The tobacco dairy smokes, but I mean, to you it's just. So it smells better than the stuff that dairy does. I mean, it smells better than what what he burns, but you don't know what his tobacco smells like when and it's on fire. The, the cheap stuff from compared to that. No, no, well, but he doesn't know. Oh. I'm sorry? How would, uh, what does the cheap stuff smell like compared to what he smokes? Uh, good roll. Ah, well, no, we'll use the same perception check. Uh, it probably smells about the same as Darius's. Why don't we buy both? Call it his share. 20, 25, you know, 20 plus 5, you know. Yeah, so 25 for, for all, all of it. Okay. Uh, let's see here. Uh, one ten. Okay. Uh, no. Yeah, one twenty-five. One twenty-five. Are you counting the ten as an expenditure? Yeah, it's out of the one forty. Because he gave his cash out. Because he gave you out oh, cash out of the one forty. Yeah, out of the one forty. Yeah. Not out of one thirty, but out of one forty. So then, 50, uh, 35, 30. 10, 5, and twenty-five. Papers for the smoking of it? No, they come with it. Okay, okay. Uh, I'm not. Come on, I'm not that much of a shyster. And uh, for the lap. I'm sorry. Uh, well, I, I don't really sell wood. Uh, I got turpentine. <laughs> Jerry wants turpentine. How much? Turpentine. Uh, he holds up like it, it, it's really weird because it almost it's definitely clear, but it's very opaque. You can barely you can barely see that there's fluid in it, and it's a single container of it. Stands about this tall, and has a very wide bottom, very narrow top. Uh, he just sets it down and. Well, this stuff, I mean, it's great for starting fires, it's great for all sorts of things. Uh, it's great for cleaning, too. I mean, you, you can get a little schmutz on your face and boom, it comes right off. I oh, mean, yes, uh, you know, I definitely uh, really clean her up. Yeah, I mean, yeah, 
and well, shit looks fine, fairly thin to me, but whatever. Uh, Thanks. The, that's gonna run these thirty gold, thirty notes. Thirty notes. Oh yes, that is hard to come by. Check to see if it's got a spray bottle so you can spray it or whatever. We only got fifteen. Yeah, that's even double blind because it's fucking different time. Since we're buying so much, can, can, can we just call all of that? You know, even. Uh, well, you got fifteen left. I'm not giving you half off that. I'll give you, I'll give you five notes off that. That's, but that's about the best I can do. So call it. You hand me ten notes. Maybe the ten notes I hand him, and then we'll call it square. <laughs> and look at that off the block. <laughs> it's odd to see such a giant man pout. <laughs> <laughs> he's been a violent. He's been in a violent. This is cycle. two days at the gunsmith. Well, we're going to go sell the silver. Two days at the gunsmith. I no, I, I have a question. Um, aside from the normal smoking stuff, uh, do you happen to have any of the uh, different smoking stuff? Why, sir, that is against the menace law to be carrying uh, said substances. Of course. Now, wait, wait, what are you, are you talking about? Smiling weed? Or are you talking about, uh, Gesnium? What's Gesnium? Gesnium. Gesnium. I haven't heard of that one. Uh, well, Gesnium is highly illegal, and I don't sell it in this establishment. Uh, but you walk about 100 feet that way, and I'm sure you'll be able to find somewhere. He points behind him, uh, in the general direction of Squatter's Plot. Uh, but, but, but if you're looking for Smiley Weed, and he holds out a very small pouch and puts it on there. About how much does that look like? Uh, a dime bag. You have no idea, as you are not a, a per-user of this substance on a regular basis, uh, that there would be 50 gold, 50 notes. Ah, uh, okay, okay. Uh, Better than any drink you'll ever have. Go the Abbot! I agree. Okay, so uh, here, let's just get the turpentine and everything else. So you got, so got the ten. You gonna take the ten? All right. So add. I don't uh, have much. Jill don't have much with eight. Be okay. I already gave you a discount at ten. Okay. Do only have this camera. Like that, but look. Little Miss, I'm so sorry, but I don't. I, I, I have to sell what I get in stock, and this is what I have in stock. Well, hold on, give me a second. Give me a second. And he 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 goes back in the back, taking the the turpentine and putting it out of the arms reach of you guys. Wow. Okay. You he is in the store for about ten minutes, and you hear him moving boxes and sliding things around and really getting after it. After a while, you hear him ha ha. And he comes back, and he's holding a small box with, that's segmented, and there are four vials and what looks to be, uh, oh, I'm sorry, three vials and what looks to be an eight-pack uh, worth of, that, that can fit eight. Uh, you can see uh, another vial on this side that is obviously empty. As he comes up, he sets it down on the counter, like, sorry, holds up the uh, broken one and, like, uh Surprise! Uh, didn't place didn't catch fire, but uh, this and he holds, he puts out the three of them, and he, very gingerly, like the turpentine, he's just kind of like whatever. This stuff, he vials this big, they're 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 very flat. They they have the same basic shape, you know, they're thin at the top. They they uh, triangle out, but they're very angular. He very gingerly sets them on the counter. And goes, um, they call this, uh, and he lifts up the box and looks at it. Uh, alchemist fire. Mm. Mm. He wrote a natural 20 on his search. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, he looks at the thing here. And, um, well, 50 gold a piece for these. These are very, very expensive and very hard to come by. You can have my 10 notes. No. Take it before no, I'm done being nice. Go ahead and roll me a persuasion check with advantage. Oh, oh, no. This cow does the whole hand grenades and two out thing. Oh, really? What? Thou's count to five? Persuasion. Do not count to six. Seven is right out. <laughs> uh, you said persuasion? Yes. Even with advantage. What do you got? Seven. Seven. Yeah, he, your, um, your, uh, 
kind of pouty technique seems to like you, it cracks for a second because you see these and you realize, oh, you know what these are. It's just like that meme of the cat. Like, like yeah. Fifty a fifty a piece. No, never miss, never. Even like Carl said that we buy everything. I can't let these go to discount, Miss. The I, to be perfectly honest, I forgot I had these, and you know what? These these right here would have paid uh paid off my building. All right. You put the tobacco back, except for the regular smoking. So you you want to get rid of the good stuff. All right, well, that's 25 back in your favor, then. And he takes that and puts it in the back. Take this here 10. All right, so that's... Don't you look at me like that, half stack. Quarter so you're stack. 15 away from the 4 and 1. 15? 15 away. Chicken to 15. All right, and he pushes one very gingerly towards you. Now, you don't want these other two. You sure? Done got paid. I gave up my tobacco. No, gentleman, give up the back. The back. He was very, very gently picked up. excited. And you see him, like, as you do that, you can see him tense a bit as he's like, oh God, please don't drop that. Chief, maybe that. Well, since I didn't know I had them, it should be easy for me to hold them. And he picks him up, and he very, like, gingerly, uh, oh, like he's holding a baby almost that he's scared of dropping, and just sets it on his counter, see him breathe a sigh of relief as he comes back around, and, all right, is there anything else? It's very gingerly put in the coat. Um, not for today. Thank you. Um, yeah, you, you said you're all flush with notes, are you? You all planning on doing some more heroin? I mean, I heard about what you did in Squatter's Quad, mm. killing that beastie. Do, do you have any more heroing that needs to be done? Oh, uh, well, I mean, there's, there's plenty that needs to be done. I don't have anything in particular, but I do have something for people who do heroin. Uh, and he picks up a couple of, oh, he picks up a couple of uh, violet liquid-filled containers and puts them down. Uh. These... Are potions brewed with Accio. Uh, I believe uh, they will knit wounds together. How much? Uh, 25 apiece. You get from Elise? Uh, who's Elise? Need Do you have shirt? Shirt. Uh, I mean, you can head to Weaver and Scissors. Uh, you got a you got a sack? I can cut uh, some holes in. I'm not giving you um, that. Uh, yeah, two silver. And he hands it just like a cloth sack. No, 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 this bare and bare chest. Damn near threw up this morning. I think the bottom or bottom like, sack. like that. Let's so go. yes to these or no? Yes, put it in the sack. Mm-hmm. All right, fifty gold. What are you looking at me? I am all Do you want them or no? Come back. Welcome, yes. Come back? Yes. All right, come back. Put the rest of the crap in the sack. Can you toss the rest of the crap in the sack? Uh, except for your alchemist, no, no, which no, he no, does not do. Yeah, yeah, which he does that's not do. So, uh, I need it. you, so go ahead and write down everything that you guys picked up. No, uh, you even got another, pe- another cloth sack. Put them all in it and then swing around 100 and rounds. It. And then everybody dies. <clears throat> No, just uh, 40 days or uh, 20 days of regular rations. Uh, 40 days of bad rations. Yeah, that's not great. Uh, then your chewing tobacco. No, put it back. Oh, uh, yeah, we put back for the tobacco. Fire. Okay, uh, and the uh, what was the other thing we got for ten gold? For ten notes. Regular smoking tobacco. Regular smoking tobacco. Uh, yeah, regular smoking tobacco. Uh, and then uh, the I'll make sure you write down the alchemist fire that you have. Yes, okay. Sir, Alrighty. And my rounds. From and make and make sure you guys note down uh, your specialty rounds too. And you guys, so right. the six that you have, yeah. no, the. No, you gave me seven. I have six of the shard and, and then one of the one hour. hour. Okay, so make sure and make sure you yeah. write down yours. Yeah, I wrote it there. Now, third weasel. Stop. You use that to make sure I don't die. Of course, cheer like gentlemen. Um, cheer. 
I would like you to go ahead and roll me a wisdom saving throw. Oh, good. Wait. Someone Wait. is going shopping. Is it against magic? <laughs> no, it is not. Damn it. It's against greed. Damn it. No. Oh, well, you know, it's not that bad. It's Part of the bad. dice. It's called cheating. Reroll that. No, I'm not rerolling that. It's a good roll for one. That is a 21. 21? You find yourself eyeing the alchemist fire a bit. And you fight an urge. A very powerful urge that you have. To drink it. Okay. Do I see this? <laughs> One. Oh, I'm sorry. Yes. Uh, you heading to this uh, the, the, uh, the Silver River? Uh, you walk in. Uh, you see the same. Oh, so that's where you're headed. Not only are they there, but where a small patch of dandelions were is dandelions that now stand about a foot and a half high and wrap around the side of the stairs and are starting to grow along the side of the building. I follow the path around. Yeah. Uh, it's, it only goes about three feet down, but I mean, just the how fast it's grown. That is not normal. But it definitely still feels natural. Something that I recently... Do I smell this? Uh, good normal survival check. The 14. 14? You still have the faintest whiff of that seaborne air. I'll go into the building and ask. Find closest person. <laughs> when you walk in uh, to the Silver River, you can see. Uh, let me pull this up real quick. An elven man pushing 90, which for an elf is, is he's getting on the ears. Very skinny, uh, shallow, shallow cheeks, back kind of bent with time. You can see liver spots on, uh, covering his head, but he has a very, very warm smile upon his face. When he sees you come in, you have to literally squeeze between uh, the shelves that are packed so close together, just jam-packed with mainly mining equipment. You can make your way up to him, and he greets you warmly. Oh, hello, young miss. Um, Welcome to the Silver River. My name is Dinar Kron. How can I be of assistance to you this morning? Um, yes, uh, beautiful, aren't they? Where's the lady who waters them? Uh, I'm not sure I follow. The woman who waters them? I'm unaware of such person. I'm just noticed them the other day when I came out and they were there and when I came in this morning to open the shop uh, well, uh, they had grown quite a bit, but um, they smell delightful and you can see he actually has some that he's pulled and he has them in a, in a cup just sitting there and he leans over and oh yes, they're quite fragrant, uh, reminds me of uh, the sea of light Old memories, uh, good memories. How can I be of assistance? Uh, don't tell me you're gonna head into those horrid mines. Good. A uh, woman such as yourself should not be working for a uh, Gulliam. They are, they're not to be trusted. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm being so forward. I find myself in a mood today. I don't have many good days uh, these days, so I just, I don't try to think too hard of when I have a good one. They're very welcome. Well, thank you. Nice. That was nice. Uh, D-Y-R-N-A-R. And then Kron, C-R-O-N. As you're walking out, you hear him uh, just, like, quietly say to himself, such a nice young lady. <laughs> And while you're having that, uh, they, they, they've been gone for a while. So, do you do anything else after you go to the Silver River? 
Okay. Uh, you basically hunt them down. Uh, you, you'll probably enter the uh, the general store right around the time that uh, they come through. You actually know. Wh- are you focused? Are you still focused on the one scent, the lady scent? Mm, a little. Yeah. Okay. So that's the. Uh, remember, you can focus on one per day, uh, and that's the one you're focusing on, right? For your ability. Well, that one's uh, that one's a short rest, but I'll focus on it nonetheless. Okay. Well, it's it's long rest. Uh, no, it's short rest or long rest. Yeah. yeah. So I can track it yeah. for twenty four hours after yeah. that. Boom. Yeah. Uh, you, yeah. And so you're still choosing to focus on that one. Mm-hmm. Okay. And the weird thing is, it seems to be just that spot. I mean, you can you walk around for a while, try to see where she went, and it's only localized in that spot. Very strangely, but you can you you know your friend's sense at this point uh, that yeah. you've been traveling with them for a couple weeks. So you can it takes you a little while, but you can track them down. So uh, inside Wing Rip Scissor, uh, Scissors, as you open the door, you see a very familiar looking uh, red skin tiefling with the st- ram style horns, uh, black hair pulled tight into a ponytail. I mean, so tight. I mean, it looks like it could probably hurt some, but it has the added effect of pulling his face up a bit, which kind of almost forces him to smile. The teeth look <laughs> very sharp as he sees you. And, oh, how are you doing? How can I help you? Now, I've met this person before. Yes, the first time you came to the Wingard Scissors. And is this Mr.? No, this is, you know him as, well, they refer to him as something else, but he told you his name is Sparkfire. And as a man who demands to be called a, a name that he may, you know, that he came up with, you, uh, you know his name is Sparkfire. Okay. Uh, you're looking for uh, where, sir? Uh, oh, wait, I remember you. Oh, you're, the, you're, the, you're the dwarf that was looking to sell some stuff off. Uh, Hi, Mr. Sparkfire. Um, what's today I'm looking to buy? Oh, okay, uh, well, we have quite a bit of stock. What, what exactly are you looking for? Great, I've got these. Looking for someone to patch up that stud of leather you learned? Hi, uh, if you've got anything higher quality, maybe, uh, I don't know, maybe exchange plus script. Oh, um, you're looking for high quality. How high quality are we talking here? Way better than this. Oh, uh, well, uh, Mr. Wingren is uh, well known in these parts of being uh, very good with leather. I'll tell you. He's got some special stock in the back. If you've got coin, and if you're flush, I mean flush, he might be willing to make a trade with you. Maybe your definition of flush and my definition of flush is different. What is your definition of flush? Are you walking around with about two to three hundred of notes on you? Oh, don't be a nay. Oh, then uh, he wouldn't be, He doesn't really have all much with uh, that right. particular merchandise, but he. Hold on a second. He walks in the back, opens the, the door like really slowly, opens the door, pushes the door open. <laughs> You see him kind of like slip inside. As, he, as he's literally going in, you see him like moving like that where he's trying not to make as little noise as possible. You see him, you see the armor first as he holds it out the door and then slowly comes his way through. And, Don't tell him I showed you this. And he lays it on the counter. Uh-huh. See this, uh, man. Go to roll me a, uh, go to roll me a perception check. 26. Natural 20. You blink. This is, without exception, the finest set of leather armor you have ever laid eyes on. The embroidery looks as if it's charging horses on the back of it in a motif that are just charging away. With the way the stitching is, you can tell what the clouds are. I mean, it is beautiful. It is, as you start to pick it up, it is lighter than what you expect it to be, but the leather armor itself appears to be thicker than what you expect it to be. <coughs> See, this, um, this is some of his good work. Uh, now, I believe he sells this here set for 300 notes. Right. But here's the thing. And he pulls out a knife. See? Just touches it to his skin, and you can see just a faint bit of red where it touched. It gra- picks up the armor, looks you in the eye, and ha! And you see it hit the armor and just glide away. Yeah, that'd be nice, but we've already established I'm not flush. But 
this is definitely something that you're interested in. I, I it, it very much is, but I cannot exchange yeah. the amount of money for the... But when you're flush, you'll be coming here. And I... you'll be wanting to buy that, right? Then I'm just doing the job. Huh? All right, well... All right. well you what? notice he's mimicking your accent when he had no accent when you came in. He had very much a more of a, probably closer to like Melionis or uh, 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 or Kalinian accent, as opposed to your accent. Oh, I'll, I'll throw something at him and I'll s switch to Dwarven with this Solace accent. Uh, like pure Dwarven? And he's like, oh, he starts talking to Dwarven and it's, it's like... Tourist in Mexico trying to speak Spanish for the first time ever style, you know, like most of the words are wrong, but he knows a, he knows a, a few words in Dwarven. Oh. He catches some of your meaning, but I'm not, I'm not much with the Dwarven. Wait, you're an asset to your employer. Oh, I, 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 I am. But you see, when you come back in, good, just tell him you've heard about the stalking. You want the set of leather that protects against the slashing. Well, All right. I'll think about it, but but for now, uh, I do have better than what you're. I mean, I have it's studded leather, yeah, but it's at least better looking than what you're wearing. Probably better quality. Looks right. like you've had that for quite a long time. I am looking for a replacement. How much would uh, the old pair take off the top from the price? Well, I can give you maybe. Uh, when he looks at it, what's that? I'll give you. Uh, Typical stud leather price, let me see. Let me look that up real fast. Okay. Sorry, folks, I know this is absolutely, absolutely riveting. Absolutely riveting. Give me one sec, let me look this up. No, it's studded. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Someone's getting killed tonight. Wow, yeah. Kyle, what? We're going to have to combat. I'll tell you what. <laughs> no. Because I like you, I'll give you 20 notes credit. Uh, which would make the set of new studded leather cost me how much? Uh, for the really good one or just the leather? Well, the one I can afford. I uh, Give me 25 more notes and it's yours. Oh. Hmm. Uh. Pulses, flipping through this wad of notes he's got. Are you, do you have the sword on you by chance? Yes. No. Huh. Oh, wait a minute, wait a minute. You'd be willing to sell that. Wait a minute. Out characters, is a strength based one? Uh, it's Dexter. It's a short. It's a short sword for all intents and purposes, but damage type is slashing. Uh, for the purposes of this campaign, simply doing a short rest with an item doesn't give it, let you know it's all of its properties. You have to spend more time with it. But an identify spell immediately uh, gets the properties of it. Great. So it looks like you know what's hanging from me belt. I uh, I do. Would you be willing to put that up for trade? Wait, well, I'd be willing to uh, put some notes towards it to find out truly what you know about it. Well, Wingring himself can't really help you with that. But Sparkfire, Sparkfire, he can. He can help you out. Wait, well, so if you can tell me what this does. 25 gold pieces and I'll tell you what it does. So that's 50 for your services and for the letters. Well, depending what happens. Well, and I'm in the market for a... Well, I've got this friend and he, for lack of a better description, has lost his shirt. Oh, I got some shirts there. <laughs> I'll tell you what, I'll give you a shirt. What color do you want? Yeah, I want one of the nice ones. You know, he's really nice to look nice in a suit. He's got a 
that he had. Oh, I got one with ruffles here. He'd like something like that. No, no, no. Nothing like that. Just the buttons. Ruffles. <laughs> or does he want one of the throws over? No, like, like the gunslinger, you know, that's coat and the shirt. Oh, you want the shirt and the coat? Well, that's going to cost a bit more. I can give you the shirt for free. But for the, for the coats, what coat are you looking for? I got seven coats in stock of different types of different sizes. And he points at the wall, and you, you can you can see them. They're all fairly nice. Made, all of them, of course, made of leather. Okay. Wait. Not enough to uh, count as leather armor, though. Uh, I've seen Darius's style. Mm -hmm. I'm going to pick one out that... Okay. Darius. Uh, so the style that he was wearing before was more along the lines of like a duster. Uh -huh. So you know, it has the flap in the back, the whole thing. It's pretty long. Uh, he's like, oh, of course you picked the most expensive one. Uh, that coat right there is gonna run you a thirty notes. Oh, But I tell you what, how about you put that sword on this counter here? Give me a minute and twenty-five notes, and I'll tell you what it does, or I'll make an offer for you. Okay, hey, I'll be paying you to tell you what it does. All right. And he has, flips out 25, and he puts it on the table without releasing his hand. As soon as he exchanges the money, he'll go up there. Okay. He takes the notes and immediately puts them in his, uh, in his vest, inside his vest. Uh, immediately takes the blade closes his eyes and you just see him start mouthing words that you can't hear and for about a minute you start kind of getting uncomfortable as he's doing this and he's kind of shifting around then you see he opens his eyes and as he does you see aqu aquamarine vapors begin to rise from his eyes then they'll fall down suddenly they're coming up and then fall down almost like they're, they're tears cascading down his arms and envelop his hands then envelop the blade that he as he holds it as he looks at it you see his eyes just turn that same aquamarine color he doesn't say anything for a moment still mumbling those words that you can't understand or hear then he blinks his eyes suddenly and that aquamarine sheen that covers the entirety of the eye is gone and his eyes are the same ruddy red that they normally are and he oh well, this is nice. Well, this here blade, see? It's really good. It's got some weight to it. And it's got just a wee bit of an enchantment that's still clinging to it. Don't know how long it's going to stay. Doesn't seem as if it has been uh, set in place with the best of, uh, of manners. But it may hold on for a while still. When you cut someone with this blade, they tend to bleed for a lot longer than they should. Oh, that will be very useful in I playing the trade as a hunter. Ah, uh, well, I wouldn't want to go using this on anything that you're going to hunt, though, uh, as the additional bleeding is going to ruin the meat. Uh, this is going to be terrifying that a simple cut is going to bleed quite a bit. Oh. Well, we'll take it. That was worth that 25 scraped. But, if you're really liking this, we might be able to do a trade. And you hear, trade? And the door opens up, and you see, let me pull him up real quick. Uh, where are you at? One ground. Okay. Uh, a man with very open, uh, pointed ears, blue eyes that are decidedly almond shaped, but a slight build, bald, but with facial hair. Looks as if he actually straight raises his head. Uh, I mean, shiny. Shinier than me right now. Very shiny. Almost. Spotty uses wax, too. Um, he kind of hobbles in and looks at Sparkfire with fire in his eyes. What do you mean, trade? And like, oh, wait, wait, Mr. Wingram. Wait, wait, okay. Uh, you know, I can do my tricks. Um, you know, I'm an Arkin, I, I told you this. Well, I know the properties of items that I that I look at and, and really can take some time to it. And this thing is, is definitely worth at least the cost of it. What is this doing out here out front? Somebody can make off with this. You know how long it took me to make this. You are on thin ice, twirly head. 
Ah! Now what's this about the... What is this? Well, I'm trying to tell you, sir, it's... It's... It's good. It's definitely worth... Probably a bit more than the Tarver's. Are you telling me my workmanship is not worth more than that? Really now? Oh, wait, come. I'm, I'm just saying. This is this this is pretty rare, okay? And it's got magic in later. Uh, magic, you say? <laughs> well, uh, how much should be saying? Well, um, to be perfectly honest, if he were to trade this for the armor, um, I would say everything he walked in, plus I'd give him at least 50 note credit on the store. Uh, I mean, that would be fair, I think. He looks at you. All right, then. What, what do you say to that deal? Well, this is tempting. Both this fine armor and this weapon are very useful to me. I can't outright afford your armor. But, um, let me tank on it. And he grabs the... Uh, as you do that, Wingrin kind of saddles up right next to uh, Spark Fire and literally reaches up, grabs one of his horns and pulls him down to his level and then starts whispering in his ear. Go ahead and roll me a perception check. It's hard to hear, but let's see. Uh, that would be an 11. Okay, so no, you, you don't catch anything that's said, but you hear uh, the, you, Spark Fire definitely responds and Ring Run, oh, Wing Run, uh looks up as you're kind of like putting it away and stuff like that and goes... I'll offer you 600 gold for that, for the blade. Oh. All right, that's, that's nice. Uh, I'll take about it. All right, well, if you're going to be selling that, you come to Weaver first, yeah. Why? You're the man. And I'll tell you, I'll even go so far as if you sell me the blade, throw on the armor, I'll still pay you 400 ups. Yeah. That's really a good offer, but uh, I'm... I think I'll just take what will pay you for the nice coat and buy a shirt. Oh, you like the coat? Takes the coat. What size are you? No, it's not for me. It's for my friend. He lost his shirt and his coat and his hat. Well, takes the coat. About around the size that you think Darius is, and you know, probably a little, maybe a little too big for him. But they, the sizes, you know, there's not a whole lot of variety in sizes. Takes the coat, takes a hat, takes a shirt, puts it on the counter. A gift from me to you. And remember, you decide to sell that blade. You come to wing room. Oh, hey. wonderful. And and then the uh, the sort of studded leather armor that I will be buying to replace. The one that I've used so well. Well, if you sell me back that one, uh, uh, no, uh, spark fires me. I don't know, for the twenty gold, for the twenty-five. And just and you see him give him a dirty look for a second, and like twenty-five gold if you if you give me that one. Wonderful. And he peels off twenty-five gold or twenty-five script. He takes it. And uh, that will put me down. We're all we're all gentlemen here. You can go ahead and strip down. Um, uh, no, I'll be taking it. Uh, uh, well, I can take the the armor off without taking your clothes off. Yeah, yeah. so I'll do that. Okay. He takes he takes and kind of recoils at the smell of it. Then yeah. it served me good. Well, it looks like it. Uh, I'll be able to get, get some more use out of it. So some lucky fella will will manage to find this. Uh, of course, around your height and skinny as you, but it'll give somebody some use. Well, I thank you much for your services. Um, starts looking at you. I'm gonna need uh, a day with uh, the new set. Uh, come here, and he pulls out a piece of tape and immediately comes up, puts your chin up, uh, slaps the under your arms, and gets you to raise your arms up, and just starts taking measurements. Like, yeah, see, that stuff isn't sized for you, but come back tomorrow. No extra charge. I'll have it fitted for you. Just right. Wonderful. Uh, your level of customer service that you've instilled in your employee here, Mr. Starfire. Is well, that's good. Notch. I'm, I'm glad to hear it, but uh, don't be going and uh, mouthing off about you having that blade, okay? Remember, you decide to sell it, you come to Wingman first. Oh, you're the one. That's I am. 
that uh, I might be wanting to sell some fur. Oh, you bring it in and give you a fair price. Wonderful. Now, uh, if there isn't anything else, um, I'll be on my way to find my friend. Um, he's probably tired of going shirtless. Well, everyone around him is probably tired of him doing it too. Have a nice day. Yeah, remember, come back and begin to sell the sword. Oi. And you walk up, okay. So that, that entire interaction, the whole thing, that would probably take you a, a couple of hours Okay. Uh, uh, talking to him. As you got, you very much get to get the sense that he definitely wants to buy that blade off of you. Okay. But you're not entirely sure as to why. So, uh, well, he just went to the bathroom, so we'll get back to him. What is everybody else doing at this point? You have caught up with the group, and... My Annie's. first thing is to find Darius and... We're going close. down okay. to the credit union. Uh, Not at least. After credit union first. Okay. Then so, uh, the Sandy. credit union is just down the street uh, from Brighton's Goods. I'll pick uh, her up and start walking towards the credit union. For the sake of brevity, uh, just to keep things moving a bit, you yeah. guys can enter there. Uh, you guys... Actually, I do need to describe this. As you all walk in... It, there is about 10 feet deep of space and about 30 feet long of space in this place. That's like a waiting area. And there are there are literally bars of dark iron separating you all from the tellers. And you can see that there's two sets of tellers. Uh, one appears to be a uh, very young woman. Uh, another one appears to be a very short and slight Probably full-blooded elephant. Yeah, I angle to try and speak with the woman. Uh, her hair is almost orange, and the clothes she wears very is very reminiscent of the falling leaves of autumn. As you, it's fairly busy in here, and it, ta- it takes you about an hour to get seen, especially if you try to get into, into her line. Uh, but if you you wait, she as you approach, she smiles at you uh, with. with not, it's not a fake smile. She seems genuinely interested, and she seems genu- genuinely open and friendly. She, oh, hello. Um, I don't believe I've seen you here before. Uh, oh, no, we're new in town. What's a fine beauty like you doing here? <laughs> oh, well, uh, flattery gets you nowhere with me, my love. But uh, uh, I am Gossamer Tronya. And I run this establishment. Oh, I guess a little. I am Caliph, and I have this silk. See, even you say your name wrong. Uh, Caliph. Okay. I'm Caliph, and uh, it, it, I, I have this silver that I oh, she, acquired. Oh, she immediately takes it to Oh, you have about 40 notes for this silver right here. Oh, that seems about right. Yeah. Um, you're looking to trade this in for straight up. We, uh, we prefer to, uh, to do notes, obviously. Uh, so I'm familiar with them. You see her, she just kind of does a strange movement with her hand, and you see almost a ghostly visage of her own hand separate from hers, reach down, pick up the, uh, the silver, the, the ball of silver, and she guides it and moves it down beneath where you can't see, then turns her attention back to you and, oh yes, I'm sorry, excuse me, the 40 notes, and she opens up a lockbox next to her and pulls out some, uh, looks like that in tens or ones, my, my love? Uh, ones. Ones? Okay, she peels out, she peels off 40 ones and puts it down for you. Um, what are you wanting to open an account today? No, not today, but uh, we will probably in the near future. Well, I, uh, I hope that is the case. Uh, we're the uh, the only bank, uh, well, you know, south of uh, Uric, so... Actually, um, if I... Can I open up an account with two notes? Uh, no, the minimum is ten notes. You know what? I will go ahead and use uh, my portion of this to op- go ahead and open up the account. Okay, so t- she has you go through uh, quite a bit of paperwork, which is making you two kind of like, oh, God. I'll take a nice little water notes and walk out. Okay. Well, uh, you, you, you just hand them to him, right? No, I, 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 I go no, over and up. I, I, I hand him ten notes. I was like, you know, it was a 25-note stack. Or, you know, bundle. You're full of shit. Yeah, he was right there. <laughs> <laughs> Give me the 30. I'll split it up. 
You will okay. bother everybody else. And make sure that Cher gets her portion as well. Do you stay with Talith, or you are bored out of your mind at I this am point? I'm being held. He has not put me I haven't put it out. Oh, okay. Mm. I'll walk up to the potion like, here you go. Okay, so you walk, so you go and you head where Elise is. That one. Uh, so you, you follow? Yes, I will. Uh, <laughs> she said, like, you come as he's like holding her and you're like, you follow. <laughs> come on, Fanny. The quarter stack wants your presence. So, James, uh, pick me and put me on shoulders, please. No. Please. No. I can't see. She want to see. Hold her up. <laughs> Yeah, he's holding him like a lantern. <laughs> <laughs> Carry around like a lantern. You're, you're, he's scaring away the dark with you. So you all had it, it takes about an hour, hour and a half. Of, you get thirty-two notes. Of, uh, 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 an hour and a half of you filling out these forms. <laughs> but you, I mean, you now have you now you are now an account holder. The there is two percent interest. On, on your money as long as it's kept in. Uh, if you uh, pull out, uh, we're not going to get into the new show, but, but basically, if you pull out the 10 notes before a year, you forfeit uh, any of the uh, interest. Just accrued interest. You oh. forfeit it to Barrage and themselves. But uh, you now have access to that, which also means that you can now gain the scripts. Bears and scripts. So a large for like large sums of money can be changed with that. So you could actually have uh, you could turn in a bunch of gems and gold and other things uh, to get a script, and on that script can be worth ten thousand notes, and it's one piece of paper you put in your pocket, and you got it. And thing is, it's bound to you. So if anybody tries to steal it, it doesn't work for them. Like they try to turn it in, and it will literally burn up in their hands. Um. Do the, uh, the establishments around here, do they work on a, on, a, on the credit system here, what, if I have an account? Um, that would be up to the proprietor of those businesses, but uh, you having an account here uh, gives you access to all of Barrington's services. Oh, okay, okay. Uh, our scripts, uh, our uh, more, more favorable exchange between silver and gold into notes and other such services, as well as... You can uh, send any of your uh, letters or parcels with our uh, system that is much more protected than what you would send for anyone else, especially the uh, the writers that would take messages in, to here and there. Well, uh, thank you. I do, I do look forward to, to enjoying your services. And the thing is, like, it's just the two of them, and there's probably eight or nine people behind you, and as soon as you're like, I'm going to open an account, you just hear a collective like, oh! <laughs> Well, I seem to have taken up enough people, people's time. Uh, uh, I bid you a oh, good day. Uh, uh, it's, it's all right, though. That is part of what having an account with us is. If, uh, if you come in with an account, then you, you can be, uh, you'll be ushered to the front of the line. Oh, excellent. And, she, and you can see most of the other people in here. There's a lot of silver miners here right now. There's a lot of people exchanging. Uh, uh, the smart ones are exchanging silver for notes and trying to uh, do other things. The other miners that are coming in, especially as you being you, you all being further around south, where that road leads directly from the mines into groundwater, there's quite a few people coming in, probably a few dozen coming in and exchanging, buying new gear, getting, uh, you know, drinking uh, drinking away their money, gambling away their money, uh, trying to just, you know, have some companionship for the night before they head back to the mines and try to do it again. Okay, so that's going to take up your time for a while. So, Darius, uh, you, the note that you have, uh, you have a uh, commission from the uh, Silver River, uh, directly from uh, what was the name I gave you again? Uh, silver. Or was it silver? The thing I've turned over. So. Yeah, it's sorry. So, uh, uh, Dinar. Uh, uh, Dinar. Uh, Dinar Kron. But uh, he has that, but it's for Iandro. Iandro is the one commissioning it, but you have your business uh, was done with uh, uh, Dinar. As you walk into his establishment, You've never been here before. 
Strangely, there seems to be a, a dandelion weed that is taking over the left side of the building. Though, it smells good. I mean, I mean you actually, you, you're a smoker. You probably can't even smell it. Uh, as you walk in, the place is cramped. It's kind of dark and depressing. You can try to make your way through in between these aisles that are way too close together. When you do, you see a older man with a smile on his face, uh, as, as I described to uh, her. He sees you and, ah! Oh! Kind of gives you a strange look and, well, that's an odd thing to do to one's hair. How can I help you today, uh, Draven? You just see... I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, uh, do you have a twin brother or something? You can say that. Ah, well, um, uh, how can I help you? Um, I had this note. Well, this receipt. Well, that's, you should make sure Draven gets that, uh, shouldn't lose that. He sent me to pick it up. Uh, well, it's not, as I told him, it's not going to be ready for at least a few days. I mean... I turned in the commission just this morning with Leandro, and he told me it'd be the better part of three, four days for the specifications that he gave, especially trying to use a chain as a weapon. Odd thing to do. Odd thing indeed. Well, I mean, it's, I mean, no different than the uh, Shader folk from Shadowfell did. I mean, that was their preferred weapon of choice. The what folk? Uh, Shader something. Shader. Yeah, shaders. I, I, it, there, there was something attached to it, but uh, honestly, I never really did a, a whole lot of trading with them. And frankly, when the Night of Stars fall happened and closed off some of those breakpoints, it didn't really bother me much. I mean, I would have liked to see the Fey Wild, but hey, you win some, you lose some, right? So these shader fall from their Fey? Well. Uh, yeah, actually, uh, elves at one point, uh, uh, le legend has it that, uh, there were the elves of, uh, this world that they decided that they didn't want to share it with them, and, uh, they had a disagreement as to what place was better. Uh, one of them liked this realm of, like, nature abundance, you know, but where it's kind of chaotic. And, uh, a bunch of them went there, and a bunch of them looked at uh, this uh, more darker, dreary place and said that was the place to go. Apparently, following some deity, um, something about ravens or something, I'm not entirely sure, uh, but the most majority just stayed here. Uh, but, I mean, after a while, you know, being apart from so long, they kind of changed. Uh, I know you had uh, the, the Feywild, uh, the Eladrin, yeah, that's what they called them. They had the Eladrin that stayed uh, in the Feywild, and they did a lot of trading. Uh, they were pretty good. They had their spires. Uh, the spires are gone. Uh, of course, Night of Stars Fall changed a lot of things for a lot of people. Uh, we actually had a, uh, a, a spot, a break point near here. Uh, well, before, of course, before, that uh, we did some, quite a bit of trading with the Feywild. So uh, they were uh, a bit dodgy about letting anyone actually into the break point to see what was in beyond, but they did a fair bit of trading with uh, Brownwater. I mean, to be perfectly honest, between you and me, without the Eladrin or the Feywild, if they hadn't found those mountains to the south, Brownwater, it'd be, well, it'd be a signpost on a dead road. He was just like rubbing his tattoos at this point. He's just uh, but the shader, the shader folk, um, yeah, I mean, uh, apparently they did a lot of training too, but I, I, I'm, I've never really met, met any of them, you know. Uh, they tend to be a dour folk, uh, not big on showing emotion. Uh, I mean, I, I don't know why you would want to trade with people like them. I don't know what you can get in a place like that. I mean, the shadow fell. But what, would, what could you find there that you would ever want? But apparently there's places that did trade with them. Do you know where that break point was? Uh, for the, uh, Feywild? Yeah. Oh, yeah, actually, uh, yeah. They, they called it the Gilding Glade Oasis. Uh, still there, the Oasis is still there, but, um, now it's not, uh, not heavy with the lodging, but it's, uh, some other stuff, uh, is there now that, uh, most people don't stop at the Oasis anymore. Not, not, uh, not the safest of places, if you feel me. I live a little bit on danger, and so does my brother. 
I <laughs> sound like something to break the monotony of anything. Well, I would definitely assume he's not one to live uh, uh, the boring life. Uh, he, we had a very a mighty long talk, him and I, though, uh, didn't talk like you and me did. Uh, wow, I haven't really reminisced about that stuff in a long time. Huh. Thank you for that. You're welcome. It seems like he's remembering good times because that smile is still on his face. Huh. Huh. No. Should write some of this stuff down. Be good for brown water. Know about its roots. I think it would too. So it's not just a silver town if it goes under. At least people know where it came from. Yeah, I mean, people forget how old just old brown water is. I mean, I can tell you stories, but, uh, I got, a, I got other things to do right now, but, uh, maybe if you ever want to hear an old man prattle on, you just let me know. Well, not that I've always been, uh, kind of to those of my own age. I normally respect and listen to my elders, because normally they have some worthwhile to tell. Well, that's good. I'm, I'm glad, uh... Respect to the elderly is still uh, 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 akin to the to this new generation coming up, but then again, you know, war and death tends to put uh, respect in the people. Oh, you made it through the war and death, so <laughs> I did something. I didn't see it. I was in brown water during that time, and brown water didn't really see a whole lot of war. Just, I mean, you just kind of see like his face just kind of like uh, flicker for a second. It's like not everybody was safe. Uh, no, uh, that is very true. I, I lost quite a bit of family in the war, but hey, that's why. Uh, is there anything else I can help you with? Uh, I'm sorry, I didn't catch your name. I, I can't. My name uh, is Darius. Darius. Uh, Pendragon. Uh, Darius Pendragon. Uh, that might a strong name. Uh, well, I'll remember you. You tell you give that 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 that, that commission note to your brother. Go make sure you pick it up. Uh, probably be ready at the end of the week. I appreciate this. Uh, you have a good one. Yes. Where did you say I find Darius? Uh, probably as he's leaving the uh, the, the silver river. Okay. Uh, so you finish with him. Uh, you walk out. Uh, you got from your all's vantage point now. You guys can see uh, Caliph. Oh, no, no, I'm sorry, not Caliph, but uh, Cheer, Fionn, and Gunner are uh, approaching a stall of a woman. You see uh, Darius. What do you do? I walk up to him, got the stuff, the hat, the shirt. Uh, uh, Lends you a, a hat that looks similar to the one you lost, a uh, jacket that looks similar to the one you had, but much nicer, and a, a, a fairly plain shirt. What'd you... You know, just kind of like... Just like step out and I just like present this, just like, what? This is for me! This is for me! No, I'm just kidding. Thank you, Wana. No, not a problem. How much does this cost you? Oh, I got it for free. Damn. Alright. You can just like, start putting it on. It, it's the jacket's a little big, but you probably like that. You know, you can, it's it's gonna be easier to to hide things in it. Very nice coat. The thing is, as heavy as it looks, as you put it on, it's like wow, that's okay. It's leather, but it still seems to breathe a bit. Oh, this is gonna be nice in the fucking heat. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Wana. And I'll drop a chair on the table and start heading towards the water spot. Okay. Like drop from like. Yeah, it's a good Yeah. Uh, Elise is there. Uh, uh, she's talking to a, a couple of other people. Come and you two, or you, will definitely recognize it as her very fake persona. Very clearly upon her face as she's talking to these people. But they just kind of, you know, and, and walk off. And she's just like, <sighs> Philistines. Agreed. For what? Bring help for Archie. Um, What? You were talking about needing help. Um, yes, but, um, that is something for another time, perhaps. Uh, I do have a couple of other things I would like to see. The reagents you, you brought me yesterday were very helpful indeed, and I would like you to continue to do that as you head on. Uh, what is that? 
And she points at the vial you just purchased. Oh, no, it's in the coat. It's in the coat. Oh, okay, so you, I mean, it's... Yeah, no, okay. No. See, so for, forgive that. Uh, yeah. No, no. And she, uh, <laughs> I'm not just, throwing that shit out. Do you have any interesting or... I'll give to your share. Go ahead and roll me a... Uh, oh, no. Go to roll me a survival check while you're waiting. Yeah. Uh, she... Okay, um... Oh, come on, as an animal. Uh, I would definitely like for you to bring uh, more of these things, especially the blood and venom that you brought from that creature. And I have a couple of requests. Um, she looks around and like, ah, this, these people don't understand what I offer. And you can see, like, it's almost like she's a rock in a river and the crowd is just breaking around her like people are staying away from her either because of the way she looks or the way her stall smells uh, the way her stall smells people are not really you are just kind of like looking at this woman you've never seen a person like this before and she's very like whoa okay she's intense yeah yeah she is very intense I would like, if you could, um, I've discovered that um, the Kesser family uses some type of compound upon their produce. Uh, it helps it grow in this inhospitable environment, and I would be very much interested if you could acquire me a sample of this. A compound. That's what I want you to find out. Okay. Do they have fruit stall or something? No, I need you to find me the actual compound. Yes. I've only discovered it by researching some of their their produce, and I've discovered this. But I need the actual whatever they're using. I need a sample of it, please. Uh, it can help me in my own pursuits. And to that end, um, you seem a bit rough and tumble. She looks at you, and then looks back at you. If you are so inclined, and you find yourself in the neighborhood, to the east, south of Creole Ranch, lies a network of arroyos. Most stay away from them as they are odd in nature, as a very lush forest grows within that arroyo. And it teems with strange creatures, one of which is referred to as a kamandai. It is a leopard like creature but has snakes that grow upon its front haunches. I am very interested in its blood, in the glands in its throat, and the venom that the snakes emit. Blood. But I must warn you, the creature is not to be taken lightly, and I would suggest staying out of the odor it emits from the glands in its throat as they can make one fall asleep. And the poison, well, if you want to see what that has done to people, there is a gentleman at the Ambershard healing uh, establishment that can show you what it can do. That is all I have for you today. Uh, if you're not going to buy anything, I'd like you to go ahead and move along so I can have other people not buy things what from me. What do you have? Two apples. For this. What are you looking for? Oh, you for this? Notes, of course. Of course. Do you have any more of those Akian potions? I have a single one left. A single one left? They do take time to brew. Mm. I have a few that I am working on, but it's going to take time for that me to replenish my stock. Chief could find out about these and 
that's, bound. Uh, I have no time frame for either of these things, I, as I have quite a few different things in my plate, but I thought it would be worth mentioning to you. Of course. I wish your purple friend was here. Uh, Kalith is uh, much better about these things, but I guess you will have to do. Mm. Uh, if you'd like to step off of my counter, please. Of course. Apologies for a giant man. Tanin, would you please help with chair down? <laughs> like you can't pick her, so you just kind of like hug her, and uh, like, as, you, as you do, uh, you see uh, Elise just like like disdainfully like wipe off the mud from your boots left oh, on the uh, counter. I put like my feet together so that the mud falls more on the Ooh, table. Okay, and, and she, she just <laughs> here. Apologies. Oh wow, well, you. I forgot how fun it is to interact with you. I wonder how they haven't killed you yet. But oh, please. Yes, um, tell, with you, Elise. Um, tell your friends, please. Come to me, I need to speak to Cal. Um, would you like to drink this? And she holds up a vial with a yellow liquid inside of it. Want me to inside check? Yeah. <laughs> Fucking toddler with a gun. That's a 19. 19? Uh, you recognize what's in the vial, it's pure from aldehyde. <laughs> no, you're okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I've been walking away. <laughs> so, what are you uh, doing in Squatter's Block? Straight to Dailies. Uh, you have no idea where he is. Ah! So where are you going? not the usual place? Nope. Uh, after you guys uh, went, uh, found his thing, they have moved. Walk into the Ben Pick. Okay. Uh, walking into the Ben Pick Pub, you actually look behind the counter and where you expect to see the very, very large uh, bugbear that you found out is missing his tongue, you do not see him. He is not there. You guys will see that he is. I have it written down. Give me one sec. Uh, you see a tiefling woman with gray skin, black hair that it goes all the way past her butt. Her eyes are solid red. She has no pupil or iris. Uh, <coughs> she dresses almost mannish. She might have a good figure under there, but it's kind of hard to tell with the way that she's dressed. Uh, you can see that she does have a fairly thick broadsword that is strapped to her back. And she is passing out uh, that throat slick that they sell here uh, to a, a few people within the bar itself. Uh, as you just kind of walk in, it's still the same basic stuff that you've seen before. Wagon wheels that they just nailed some wood planks to, turn on its side, and that's a table now, you know. Go up to the table. Yes. She so puts a throat slick in front of you. Kind of brushes it aside and put it on the table, or on the bar. Need to find dailies. Friend look. Well, acquaintance. Well. Ish. She puts her hand near where your hand is and uh, doesn't look like much of a friend. Well, enough to where I shouldn't have to pay more to find him where he's moved his tent. Well, I've never seen you before. But I'll tell you what. You come back to in, in tonight, and I'm sure Dalys will be here. I'm one saves his brother over on the plot over in Vega Ridge. Uh, you saved Dalys? Yeah. Well, go fuck yourself. <laughs> and she puts her finger on the, the one note and starts that playing. That didn't answer the question. Oh, it, uh, I told you Dalys would be here tonight. That's what one note buys you. Oh, uh, what would it cost to find his current location? Uh, if I knew it, I still wouldn't tell you. Why not? I don't like you. You don't like Egan? I especially don't like you if you saved him. Why's that? Guess. Oh, you're a jilted lover. No. <laughs> See, because I like men. Then Egan probably wouldn't qualify on that one. Well, that's the one thing we agree about. She starts pulling the one the note away from you. Just hold it down. Yeah. You don't want to be playing with me like this. Or what? I'm just saying. 
I'll cut you for it. Pull out the deck, shuffle it. High card gets the note. You already owe me the note. I'll tell you what, I get a high card, it's five. You get a high card, and it's just a one. That doesn't sound like a good idea. Sounds like a great idea to me. You're like racist. I think I like you. Well, what was your name again? Well, my name is Lavatra. Lavatra. Hey, where's Tungless? Oh, Sean? Oh, that giant piece of shit. Uh, well, he works here every third night. There's three of us here. Who's the third one? Well, that would be uh, Taru. Taru, Lavatra, and Tungless. Gotcha. Yep. You take that note, you take that throat slate, because I can't stomach that shit. Yeah, neither, neither can I. And she pulls out a flask from it and opens it up. You got an empty cup that ain't been shit in. I didn't give you any of my stock. I was going to share. She takes the throat stick and literally just puts it back on the, on the counter. Pour a little vodka. Takes it. And I mean, she just shoots it, holds it in her mouth, like swishes it around like it's Listerine. Swallows it. I hate you a little less. <laughs> Fair enough. See you tonight. All right. Don't get killed. Ain't gonna happen. Wander out. Is it about four o'clock? Uh, this at this time it's actually put it's well past <laughs> lunch. I mean, you guys have been uh, burning the burning the day away at this point. So you guys are pushing. It's getting around the third meal. Go oh, ahead straight to the guns. Nothing as close to the time that I was supposed okay. to. Okay. You go to get food first or not? No. Nope. Okay. Then then gambling. All right. Uh, so real quick, we're gonna do that. And then we're gonna we're gonna do the rest of this. Uh, so as you enter the uh, uh, Water Valley Firearms. You see Gren behind the counter, all smiles, dressed nicely as she was before, seems to be uh, well put together. There's a few more people in the shop. She's like, all right, y'all got about 10 minutes left. Go ahead, peruse my wares, look at the art that I make. Oh, hey, hon, how you doing? You here for your time? Yep. Oh, well, that's good. Uh, I'll tell you what, uh, let these people leave, uh, pack up, and I'll take you into the back, and I'll show you what I got. Sounds good. All right. How much to shoot that Morgan? I know you ain't going to sell it to me for the lot I got. Well, I'll tell you what. Just to show you how good I am and what I do, I'll let you take two rounds out of it today. Excellent. Where's the target? Well, it'll be in the back. Okay. I do my thing then. You just kind of walk around and wait for people to thin out. And literally at 5 o'clock, she's like, all right, get your sweet asses out of my establishment, please. Uh, you can keep your sweet ass here, though. Mm. Other people just kind of chuckle. Mm-hmm. And some of them grumble like, oh, fuck this place and leave. Uh, she uh, walks up for the first time and locks the door. And they're like, now you can't get away. I'm just kidding, dearie. You couldn't get away anyway. <laughs> and she walks in the back, opens the door, and what you would expect to see is her living quarters. It, sure it is, but she has a tiny little cot in what looks to be an 80-foot long by 40-foot wide dream of heaven that Gunner has had since he was a kid. Everything you could think of every material is in this place. She has her own smelting forge. She has everything you can cheer, everything you can possibly imagine. It, it's beautiful. I, it's okay. You let the tears come, sweetie. No! <laughs> uh, she shows you around. It is... Five gold is a steal uh, for working in this place. And you see that she is already hard at work to replace the latch gun that she sold. And... Very, as she told you, she is working with you at the same time. And nine o'clock, she calls Kaiba, she kicks your ass out. Yeah. During that time, what are you doing specifically? Working on the pistol and helping her out. Well, she doesn't have, she, you, if you try to help her, she shoes you away. No. She but uh, if you, every once in a while she'll come up and she'll be like, oh, honey, no, like this. You know, yeah. she, you know. But uh, so what are you doing to the pistol? Tuning it. Okay, so you're just getting the feel for it, okay? Trying to little tweaks. Okay. Go ahead and roll me a uh, gunsmithing, and for this, for this one, we're gonna go ahead and do intelligence, because this is more of like you trying to figure out how you're gonna improve this. Uh, 
there's the uh, eight. total five. Five? Okay. Oh, sure. uh, yeah. You're just too enthralled by this place. I mean, you want to play with everything here. I mean, yeah. you want to get into the forge, you want to get into the smelter pit, I mean, you want to get into all of it, and that kind of distracts you. Yeah. Well, so, you literally pull your gun apart, and you get distracted with what she's doing, then you come back, you tinker with a little bit, and then you, I mean, the first day is basically wasted, but, I mean, you're learning the lay of yeah. this, this land. Uh, she will, will smile at you, she wipes her sweaty forehead, as it does get fairly hot in this place, and she's like, okay, um, I'm going to go get myself some dinner, so uh, if you'd like, uh, you can escort a lady uh, to the Ember Inn. Give me your goddamn arm. <laughs> As she just grabs your arm, holds on to it, and, like, has you walk her over to, uh, oh, no, she, she's way stronger than what she looks. And she just, like, pulls you, and you're just, you're kind of walking like that, you know, like, ah, escorting's extra money. <laughs> And you're like, yes, I will have to charge you extra. <laughs> That's oh, a little oh, bit of uh, she, she'll smile at you, but uh, once she gets to the Amber Inn, yeah. she completely ignores you. She goes in and she starts having a conversation with Tomlin and just talks. And you guys see that Norris is gone. Uh, so while he's doing that for all that time, what is everybody else doing? Well, when I finish at the, uh, the bank, I'll head over to the sheriff. Okay. Anybody else doing anything else? Or okay. So just for the sake of ease, we'll say that you guys go to the sheriff about the same time. That makes that, that makes sense to me. Anybody else doing anything else of import? Okay. And you two? Yeah, say it to the mics. Do you have to do things, Fanny? Uh the herbs that you saw that she had, nothing that really caught your eye. I was too busy. Yeah, you're just staring at her with yeah. intensity. Yes. She was very intense. Fanny, why don't you make yourself a cat? And I carry you. She'll carry you around. We talk about some things. And then later, Fanny become Fanny again. And? Be the cat. The little cat. Mm -hmm. Please. I need to talk to you about water. Oh, and I want to talk to you about your spirits, too. But we'll, we'll do that again. I want to talk to you about the water. Can you speak back? It's can okay. It? I want to talk at you. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> it's coming to pass from being you. a shoulder cat. <laughs> okay, so you acquiesce, but you get up for that shoulder cat. Yeah, she, so oh, no, he, he, he like, 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 no, 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 this. like, you're trying to hold her and like, she you know, keeps climbing up, like this, and she drapes over you like she's a scarf. Okay, that's fine, I'll still be like, <laughs> oh, yeah. you know, like, playing with her ears a little bit, but like, gently. So, okay. Then we need to go ears? after something that might be affecting the water. So we'll get to that yeah. here in a little bit. So, uh... Uh, for this last bit, we'll do you two at the sheriff's office. This has been riveting tonight. It's great for me. <laughs> Wait, what would be done? We're going to the same place. I see that. How inconvenient. <laughs> Wait, we haven't had that talk yet. Oh, yes. Uh, what talk is that? Uh, please remind me. <laughs> Wait, um, I talked to Chair, but just to let you know, We've made a lot of money in a short amount of time. So, I will be trying to work with you. We do seem to be good at it, and I do like the flow of money. Okay, so, it took a lot longer to express that to your wee friend, but uh, I think you understand me meaning. Yes, uh, next time, to, to save you some effort and trouble, let me express it to her. She understands me better than most people. Well, I mean, I'll do me talking myself. Oh no, no, no! I, I, I understand. Um, I just, uh, she doesn't understand people very well, and I know how to translate with her in a way. Well, oh, but uh, after you. Oh yes, yes. Thank you. So as you, you all enter, you guys see uh, a very familiar dwarf is sitting with uh, Wolverith. Uh, you guys know his name is Ezrigin. He's the, the dwarf that stuck a shotgun in uh, 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 Fionn's face uh, and helped you guys defuse the situation that you all had with apparently Alarahal and company. 
he's taught they're having a conversation, but when you guys come, they kind of stop and they look over at you. Uh, 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 are we interrupting? No. Uh, always. Uh, as he's in, and Wolver's like, please don't just come. Yes, um, uh, I have found out some information about uh, Merrick, as you requested. Oh, uh, well, your friend here had told me that you'd been to Big Ridge, and I'd heard tell that you all had been out that way. Uh, also heard tell that you all had done some work for uh, Lady Marigold. Uh, I may have some questions about that sometime, but uh, what, what, what else do you have for me? Well, um, Merrick, uh, along with um, what it seems to be the previous holder of that cell over there, that, uh, you... Reuben. Yes, Reuben. Um, they kind of call them the vacant. No, I'm sorry, not the vacant. Daydreamers. Oh, I'm aware of people trying to give the people a name. I mean, it, to me, it's just destitute folk that don't want to go on with it. Well, let me ask you, how many people have you seen exhibiting those kinds of symptoms? Well, the, the two. The two? Uh, well, it is rumored that there's over 30 of them. Go ahead and roll me an inside check. You can as well since you're there if you, if you like. Uh, that would be a 21. That'd be a 13. You see... You don't catch anything from over us. But you see, when Wolverth says that, just the two, you see the dwarf kind of look at Wolverth strangely for a second, and then change it, you know, try to catch himself and look back at you all and nothing happened. You do not catch this. The intel guy. Yes, uh, well, um, not much has been said to why they're like that. Uh, I guess you could believe that they just no longer have the will to live. Uh, I... I believe something else is going on, but uh, I haven't figured it out yet. Ah, well, if you figure it out, then uh, definitely come by and let me know what you find out. Uh, could be useful, but uh, now, seeing as how uh, you all have uh, neglected to complete the task I set for you, uh, probably better anyway, since uh, notes are a little hard to come by, but uh, I'm glad you all came in as... Well, Thregerdan has denied my request to be able to meet justice out for uh, Whisper over there, and he kind of looks over at the very, the kinderling cell, where you see pacing back and forth like a wild animal, the very scarred halfling, just looking at, oh, looks like he's missing patches of hair, very fresh, looks like he's tearing out sections of his own hair within the cell, and he's just pacing around like a wild animal, staring at you all. You don't hear his footfall, so he's probably still has that effect on him, or probably reapplied by Wolfers. Then, being, seeing as that how that's how they have decided to play this, I am in need of Tiffin and Whisper to be tra uh, traveled north to Uruk, so that way they can uh, see Judge Kobla, uh, Kobla and get their their reward for their life decisions. And well, seeing as how. I don't have much of another choice as I can't use my own deputies. Uh, I'm offering a hundred notes to anyone who decides to do so. So you all think on that. I, I understand it's a, a bit of a ways. That's ten days of travel there and back. And it's a dangerous road. And he's... Tiffin may as well be a sweetheart. But Whisper, well... Whisper gives me the chills, so... So that's why I can offer 100 notes. Uh, apparently, it's not in any rush. They're going to sit here just the way that they are. Because Copeland's not going to come down anytime soon. Uh, seeing as how uh, judges are free to come and go as they will. So, Greg, can, uh, can this be put on the, uh, the arbiter's plate? Oh, no. Alderman? No. No, 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 no. Hey. 
but he's he's a representative of it all. Uh, no, no, he's a representative of the madness. Uh, he's quite a few steps above representing the law, and frankly, this is this falls to me. This is my job, not his. Well, when we uh, when we get a break in our schedule, we'll certainly uh, come back and. Uh, Arrange well, him. that is mighty fine. I'm glad you all can think about me like that. Uh, and I hope that break in your schedule happens soon. You can feel the sarcasm dripping from what he's saying without an inside check. See, he's more on edge than what you all are used to. Yeah. Uh, something got in your, your, you uh, worried that I should? Uh, yeah, I got uh, an alderman in town, as you all know. I got... Unrest in squatter's plot. I got uh, people getting drunk. I got um, people fighting in the streets. Uh, apparently, a um, couple got in a scuffle. And somebody apparently drew a sword and started swinging at someone and got his just desserts, but weren't able to find him and weren't able to find the, the goddamn, the god's damned uh, man he was swinging at. Mm, you do have your plate full. I do. Um, and, and then what's this I hear about uh, work drying up here? Oh, well, I mean, that that's a lot of rumors. I mean, th- to be fair, y- y- you got to understand, I don't know, they're turning away the people they don't want working there. I mean, I wouldn't want those people working there. Oh, okay, I... I understand. Uh, they're they're being selective about their employees. Well, really am should be selective about their employees. I mean, come on. Then. Of course, how, of how many of them are going to try to pocket that silver instead of actually turn it in? You know, yes. like they're given a fair cut for what they find. You know, but they got They got They have to follow procedures, and a lot of these people think they're just going to walk into that mine, mine for a couple of days, and walk out with their riches. Like that's not the way it works. Well, yes, and, and the less the riffraff here, the better. That's the way I see it. Uh, well. uh... Thank you. Um, well, like I said, when uh, we can uh, find time to do it, we'll certainly let you know and get back here. Oh, wow. Uh, Hopefully uh, within the next few days. I uh, wait with bated breath. Oh, yes, yes, of course. He uh, takes his uh, spectacles off, throws them on the table again, kind of rubs his snout. Uh, more for like, more like, we want to fetch you a drink, boss? Uh, you know what? Yeah, just... Don't let the alderman or his men see you bring anything, all right? Like, all right, boss. And he gets up and kind of muscles his way past you two. Yeah. Well, obviously, we'll leave you to your peace. Oh, thank you. Do you follow with me? Yeah. yeah. Okay. So, uh, we're going to go ahead and get to uh, later on in the night. Dinner's a bit late tonight. Tomlin is not quite as... Uh, rigid with the schedule as Norris is, uh, so he lets time get a little bit away from him, and serves up what appears to be just the reheated chili, uh, just trying to get rid of the rest of the batch. So it's not quite as good for, uh, as good as what you guys have come to expect, especially for the steaks he had the previous night, but I mean, it's, it's hot. It gets the job done, although people are kind of more picking at it than being enthusiastic with it, but Tomlin doesn't seem to care as he's just talking and having a good time. Is anybody doing anything of import while you guys are having dinner? I have My another drink. My plan is to eat and then get some shy, wake up early, and go home. Okay. Anybody else? Similar. I'm sorry? We'll get that a map. The, the map you guys were given? Yeah. Okay. What do you look for? Or just, or just familiarizing yourself. Well, no, I'm looking at like an overall map. Like, I'm just about the best you you find. You haven't found another one in town. The um, brown water and the surrounding environments. Yeah, I'm looking at for the village blade. I go and talk to Chad. Mm-hmm. Uh, Are you still at the shoulder cap? I guess so. Well, Is it a clear night? Uh, actually, let me see. I have that written down. Yes, I'm that crazy. I have the weather patterns marked. It's okay. Crazy's good. I know. Uh, it's scattered, like, kind of scattered clouds. It, it doesn't look like it's... It looks like it's the tail end of that storm that came through. Just bits of clouds that were kind of like trailing like this really slow rhino in Jumanji. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I see like the cat, cat and I was like, that's a nice... Wait, uh, Fjord? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> nice trick. 
<laughs> but what are we going to do the next few days? She Your nails? Have plans. Why? Well, with plans, the front doors bang open. As you all look, you see, standing there, two very large armed men. Uh, they have a blade at their hip that looks to be ornamental, but deadly. And they each have a six gun on the opposite hip. They kind of look around for a second. Uh, Tomlin looks up and looks over at the uh, uh, deeper in the barn. Hey, get... The sign on the table says reserved, guys. I uh, don't know what that means. Well, it means it's safe for someone. Well, I'm someone. Get away from the table before I call my get wake my dad up and have him come out here. Fine. Guy gets up and he says, oh, I'm sorry. Table right there. I'm set for you guys. Okay. Uh, hold, hold on. He goes there and he wipes the table down real quick. And sorry about that. Sorry about that. Uh, this point, music dies down as people are kind of looking around and in walks. A, let me get this for you real quick. This is going to be a little bit of, uh, of explain. So, you guys see a tall Cuban man dressed very finely, much finer than even what Calif wears. He has auburn hair, very blue eyes. He seems to have a stern look in his eyes, though he has a slight smile upon his face. A strange kind of roguish, crooked smile. One that almost puts you at ease, but those eyes are very intense. On his arm is a woman, very short, around 5'2", blonde hair, brown eyes, beautiful. I mean, to the point of, if people, if you see her, you just catch a glance of her, you double take or triple take. I mean, some, uh, a beauty you do not see on a daily basis, and something that you remember that beauty. If she were to walk across the street, people would stop to stare. She uh, nods to people when she goes by and smiles very sweetly at them. She wears a... almost like she's dressed for the opera. Very opulently dressed. The dress she wears is made of the finest silk, a very, very nice shade of forest green. You... Very nice uh, for you. Uh, you can see that there are actual real flowers that seem to be growing in the dress itself. And you're not sure how they're staying alive. But they seem to be blooming and unblooming on a re at regular intervals, which is very, very unique. With them is a third man. The, or the third person is a man. Uh, looks to be of elven uh, descent. Average height, average build, very pale. Almost alabaster white skin, but his eyes look to be black. Pupils are black. He is ruggedly handsome, charming. As he walks in, you see him shaking people's hands. People are like, oh, Alderman, how are you doing? And he, oh, hey, hey. Uh, while guys are playing cards, he puts his hand on the guy's shoulder, looks at him, and goes like, oh, man, guys, he's got a straight flush. And you see guys, like, fold, and the guy, like, okay, puts his cards down. Thanks, rakes the pot. Uh, so he, and people are like, oh, man. As he just walks in and sits down at the table and... Uh, even with the still just slight sheen of wetness, you know, as, you know, uh, like a waiter is kind of cleaned off your table for you in a restaurant, and then you sat down immediately, he doesn't seem to care. It's very fine, what looks to be probably like a thousand-note suit that he's wearing. Mm. He puts his uh, hands on his, you know, his elbows on the table, and like, um, well, what's for dinner tonight? And you see uh, Tomlin kind of blush deeply and chilly. And they're like, that sounds delightful. Can we get three bowls of chili? And please, we love that three tree cider. Please. Uh, he pulls out glass goblets that you guys have never seen before, fills them up, gets very nice what looks to be actual china uh, with helpings of uh, uh, with helpings of uh, chili in the bowls and spoons that are obviously silver in make. And they are uh, uh, Tilsa is uh, 
serving tonight, and even she has a smile upon her face, and it seems to be on her best behavior. Her back is so rigid, you think if you pushed her hardly in the shoulders, it would snap in half. <laughs> she uh, delivers the food, and people begin, like, it start, like, slowly starts to die down, music begins to pick back up, and they seem to be just having a conversation uh, with each other. Standing in front of the table are the two very large men with very grim looks upon their faces. You guys can suss out without any rules that this is Master Sevenson, the human man with auburn hair. He is the master of the town. And he is the new master of the town for about three years now since Holland Rollick uh, gave him the title. Handpicked him. On his arm is Persephone Rollick, his daughter. The daughter of Holland Rollick. And wife to Sevenson. Now, Sevenson is simply referred to as Sevenson. The legend has it that is the name he chose for himself as he was the seventh son of a nameless whore that brought himself in the position that he is in. He seems to have no last name, so while people find him charming, there's been some people, you've heard rumblings that his leadership does not quite live up to the shadow that Holland Rollick kind of spreads across everything. Holland Rollick is a beloved man. Well, he was, while he was alive, dead for, at this point, a little over six weeks. They, they have themselves a very nice meal. Uh, roll me a slide of hands. Can we do a stealth check first to get in position? Um, sure. And where, where are you doing? Because where they're sitting, you're not going to be able to see them from the window outside. You would have to remain in the bar. Top of the stairs. To do it unnoticed. Well, the, the stairs actually are outside. Oh. This is a uh, this is a large single room. Yeah, I just want to do it without any other. <coughs> so go to roll your stealth check first. Well, how depending on how good that is will depend on if I give uh, people disadvantage. Okay. Uh, not natural, but twenty. Okay. Um, go ahead and roll your sleight of hand. Seven? Okay. Yes. Okay. They have themselves a very nice time. They stay for about two hours. Uh, you see that Persephone talks a lot with Wellesley. And I'm sorry, I, didn't, uh, I, I, thought, I, I don't know if I mentioned that, but the alderman is obviously Wellesley, okay. well, well, uh, the very pale uh, element. She speaks with him a lot, while uh, Sevenson doesn't speak much. He doesn't speak at all to Persephone, but he speaks a little bit to Wellesley. But Persephone uh, speaks to Wellesley a lot. They seem to have a very uh, intense conversation. And... Sevenson just kind of looks back and forth between them, just there, basically. After they're there for about two hours, right around 10 o'clock at night, uh, which you come in, they've already, they're already sitting by the time you get there. Yeah. You're kind of like, you have no idea what's going on. Uh, they get up, and with their escorts, they leave. After about 30 minutes of them being there, though, um, I would begin to play my harmonica. Okay. It's probably being better than the piano. Well, you know, he's pretty good. Go, go and roll me a performance check. Maybe not today. Um, 12. 12? Something about their presence just throws you off your game tonight. I mean, you're okay. I mean, it's, it's not, you don't play badly. Then I it's play just, with the piano. Yeah, yeah. You, you, he kind of plays with you, and that, that helps shore it up a little bit, so it's, it's, not, it's not a bad performance, you know. But it's not your best. Uh, but they will get up and they will leave. Uh, does Darius or uh, Dravens, is Dravens able to actually sit like a uh, jockey in the back of mine? Do either of them like notice anything about the pale dude or the elf chick? <clears throat> what, what, in what way? Like anything like familiar or anything like that? Well, uh, the. Uh... Oh, I'm sorry. Ah! 
I should have moved out here. Give me a second. Pull this back up. Oh my god, I'm so sorry. <laughs> I already have 122 uh, freaking uh, uh, pages. Oh no, N NPCs already for this campaign. 122. Uh, well, there's the human female, the human male. Uh, you, so you have seven sin and Persephone. Persephone is human. Okay. Uh, the Rosalind is obviously elven. You can see the the point to his ears. Seems like he's got quite a bit of elven blood in him, but he is very pale. Yeah. And that's why I was wondering if, uh, for example, Draven might have paid attention to him. We'll have to see if, uh, if Draven comes out of uh, he doesn't notice anything. Darius doesn't notice anything about it. Okay. Okay. I get, uh, get chilly multiple times. I get a scarf down my bowl and head to Slaughter Plot. Okay. Uh, you can go into uh, the Bed Pig Pub and, as promised, now she is still there, okay? Uh, but as promised, you will see uh, that sitting at a table with the familiar typhoon whose name you don't know uh, is there. Uh, but also, Egan, or uh, Egan is there. What's the table with uh, and when you walk in, Lavatra like catches eyes with you for a second and just gives you this look like told you. Smile. Leave what's left of the vodka, which probably isn't much. Yeah, not much at this point. Yeah. Leave it for. She takes it in one chug. I mean, just downs it. And then go sit down with Dalius. Oh uh, well, as you you turn away, you see her down it. As you turn away, you see her grab some of the throat slick and just fill up that bottle and then put it in front of somebody else. <laughs> I like her. Uh, as you you approach the table, the uh, bugbear that you saw before kind of takes a step forward, puts his hand out, looks back at uh, Dalius. Uh, Dalius looks at you and. Put my own peace of mind. Do me a favor and just hand those uh, those six guns over to my bugbear friend. And no, we don't have no it. trust now. Uh, uh, trust but verify, I say. You have your six gun. Uh, yes, but uh, I have no reason to attack you. I don't have ties to the sheriff like you do. I don't have any reason to attack you. I'm talking to you before I talk to him. Then how about we start building trust by you handing those six guns to the bugbear? I give him one of them. How about you sit down without a weapon on me, and we can have ourselves a conversation. Or you can make a big scene. And Seems you like you don't trust me. I, I don't trust anyone. I don't even trust him. And he jabs a thumb at, at Agen, and Agen just kind of smiles at you. Keep my knife. Oh, man. you See, apparently you don't trust me either. I Same trust as everybody. As yeah, that's... Just about as much as yeah. you trust everybody. Exactly. So, how about weapons to him? And then have a seat and have a conversation. I even buy you a round or something that's not that throat slick. How about I unload them, but I don't like other people handling them? Fair. Keep them on the table. Fair enough. Keep your hands away from them, too. So you the coat over them and put yeah, it. Yeah, you can take the coat off and okay. Yeah, but then that's a, that. That looks fair to me. Now, what can I do for you, Gunner? Well, I figured I'd come ask a few questions since I might have done you a favor a little bit ago. And you, uh, you hear uh, Egan next to him just kind of chuff a bit. Like, yeah. Well, seeing as how uh, I got a question for you first, um, so my brothers told me a story. I'd like you to tell me a story. What's the story about? Uh, about a group of people walking into uh, Vigor Ridge. Tell me what happened. I don't care. The story we were supposed to tell the brother was that we saved him from the, uh... The two other guys. The two other guys? That were supposed to be working for a... That were working. Well, I heard tell that a group of people walked in. One good meaning some bitch tried to get himself to Ed. And they had a little bit of an issue. Then a certain someone's brother had some people who were working for him. Decided they didn't like him too much. He looks over at Egan. 
And then he just looks back in with just even keel. Fortunately, those two individuals met a unfortunate end. Well, with having a six-gun hole in their forehead and all. Well, your telling is not quite as eloquent as my brother's, but, uh, all right. Then, I'll let you ask me a couple of questions, and I'll answer what I want to. You go right ahead. Where do I find Alara Hall? Left me a message I want to return. Well, that's, uh... Tell you what. You get yourself some free time. How about... You watch the Fergus State. At night. See what you see. What else you got for me? One, someone want to get into the Fergo Estate quiet like and have a talk with somebody. I would not recommend it. I know it's a stupid idea, but no, say they uh, want no, to. No, no, no. There's a stupid ideas, and then there's ideas that just get you killed, and that's one of the what? Well, that's one of the latter. It might be worth some money to you. Uh, no, it is not. A whole worth lot of money. <laughs> you don't have a whole lot of money. Even no. working for Marigold Creel. I know you ain't got the kind of money it would take for me to do anything like that against the fur goods. No, there ain't no love it. lost between us. Don't you get it twisted. I'd like to see them some bitches burn. But I ain't stupid enough to be a part of that. Oh, I'm not saying I'm going to do anything wrong. I just might know someone who might want to have a talk with somebody inside there. Then I would suggest you ask whoever's inside there to come on out peaceful like and have yourselves a conversation. But if you're trying to get in the Fergus estate, you may as well go ahead and dig a grave right now, jump on down there and save yourself the trouble. Who's dumb enough to try and have me killed in Vigor Ridge? Well... Right seemed like you pissed off a few people. Myself included. Though I don't want you killed. I thought we were even. Yeah. Didn't say we were even. I didn't say we weren't even. I just said you'd piss me off. You have a, a way of doing that. So, I mean, you'd be, at this point, it'd be a line a mile long to get at your throat. All right. Who would have tried to have the purple one and the little one and everyone else killed over in Bigger Ridge? Well, you've already said a name. I mean, that right there would be about, but I'd be careful with that one. Why? There's a reason that one's still alive. There are hard men that you don't easily mess with, you understand? And you can believe you're hard, but you don't know how hard you are until you try to bite steel. Get my meaning. <clears throat> Might actually understand that. All right then. But if you did uh, done pissed him off, well then uh, I believe you pissed off a few people by proxy. But hey, you're good at pissing people off. I'd say it's a talent of yours. Yeah, it might be it. Uh, now, if you don't mind, uh, I got uh, some pressing issues that we have to get to tonight. And I'd suggest you not be in squatter's plot. Something going to happen I'm not going to like? Oh, I'd suggest you go and get yourself some sleep up in that old comfortable ember inn. Fair enough. Don't get have yourself a nice killed. You have a nice walk now. I'll head back to the ember inn. Okay. So, at this point... Uh, well, nah, well, we're going to go and power through, guys, because if we take a break now, we may as well just end. So we're going to yeah, power through. Good. All right. So you all go ahead and just end the night, correct? Get yourself some, uh, some food and go to sleep. Now, I would like each of you to roll me a perception check with disadvantage. Well, there's a disadvantage. Okay. 
So 16 and 18? Uh, along to every other roll tonight. <laughs> You're not sure what time it is, but you find yourself startled awake. I do have a question about that. Are we in a room with only one bed? Yes. So all three of us are on this bed? No, Fiona's probably on the floor. Mm. Unless I discovered the softness of the bed, in which case she's sleeping like, you know what a cat looks like when it sleeps on the back? <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Right. So I'm like draped. Spread um, eagle the, the whole way. So I'm draped on them <laughs> on the bed. Like that. So you are, you're right. having a very uncomfortable sleep. Or it's very warm, and I like it. Yes. No, no. I you you, you, you know the other thing about cats, how they somehow manage to take up way too much room. They really okay, should. Yeah, so, you got like a little sliver. And I'm on top. And she, so you got a little sliver of the bed here. You're, you're like, like kind of pushing them away, and you're laying perpendicular on both of them. Okay, okay, so then, yeah. but those two are on the floor. I've got the bed. Uh, you start awake, and as do you. And you're, you still got your head is still sleep clogged, and it takes you over a minute to try to like knock the sleep out of your head and really listen in the stillness of the night. And you hear it. Just the tail end of it. And then dead silence again. <clears throat> Double check the six guns. Make sure the door is locked. Go back to sleep. Okay. The next morning, you all are woken up by shouting. Um, I am out before the sun's up. No, so you're woken up by shouting. Okay. As you all make your way down, there is a mad rustle of activity. I would like each of you guys to go ahead and roll me an investigation check, please. Flunkings. Uh, no flunkings. Yeah, fuck. Fuck. That was a zero. That was a zero. <laughs> you're just. <sighs> okay. You found the softness of a bed, and you're still thinking about it when you walked in, when you like rushed downstairs. Investigations and intelligence? Yes. 17. 17. 16. 19. 19. 19. 12. 12. 16. 16. So everybody except you, uh, you're just kind uh, of. Uh, you guys can start grabbing passerby and. Tilsa, who is still awake at this point, uh, will tell you, oh, there was a hell of a shootout in Squatter's Plot. Uh, I, I don't know the details, okay? It's just I heard it. It, just, it went on for a few minutes, but oh my gosh. Uh, there's, I mean, they've been pulling bodies out, and uh, the people have been running through, like, oh, uh, 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 scared the hell out of me. What do y'all do? At this point, the sun is not up yet when you all have been woke, awoken by this cacophony. Try and get breakfast and a drink. Oh, there's no breakfast happening. And there's no drink happening as Tomlin's not here and Tilsa's not serving anybody. So you the sun hear is something here. last night. The sun is not up, no. You, you can see uh, the, the horizon is painted with color just a little bit, so you probably got maybe an hour till sunset. Or sunrise, sorry. You heard something and you didn't let me I know. wanted to be out hunting. Mm-hmm. Oh, well, the time you would normally this is much earlier than they would have woken up uh, they you, you usually wake up at first light you yeah. try to beat it by a couple hours and this is when this is all happening so I'm, I'm all ready yeah like they, they come down they're probably also like in, like half ready to go while you're ready to go well everybody I'll leave it to you to find out what happened I've got some work to do and I leave okay all he, right. he walks off into the night I might need your help. For what? In case the sheriff wants a hand handling whatever that was. Money in it. More than a few rabbit pelts. Oh, fuck. You got 30 minutes. Let's go find out. Then see what's what. Why? But if, but if it's left to other people, we've got time. Yeah. I, I want to build up a supply. There's also a conversation you and I need to have. Okay. As you all begin making your way towards Squatter's Plot, you guys will see that four of the deputies are outside Squatter's Plot that are preventing people from entering. Some of them even having to pull a weapon and like, you back up now! 
go about your business. They are serious about this. As you all approach, be like, uh, the dwarf is there, sees, recognizes all of you. And I, I, I know you all want to help, but uh, just do, do me a favor and back, back away. There's a lot of dead people in there right now, so. Oh, wonderful. I, I'll be going to our tents. Hello. Oh, uh, I'll back away. Okay. Uh, you guys can, uh, while you, with, uh, with your all's uh, uh, investigations, you guys can hear, like, apparently, well over a dozen people were killed. Some people say over 20. Some people say close to 30. You're not entirely sure of the number. But you can see that there are dead, and you even see a couple of wounded that are being moved uh, out on stretchers. Some are being uh, you know, rushed over to the, the amber shard, while others are being sent to the church. <coughs> and you can tell which ones are alive and which ones are dead by that. What do the wounded and dead look like? Are they uh, dressed like they belong in Splatter's Pot? Yeah, the whole lot of them. I will try and sneak in outside of their view. Okay. Uh, there's not where they're set up. You're gonna have to try to go all the way around, like literally go head, like head north to out of brown water, make it your way over, and then come back in. That would be the safest way to do it. <clears throat> and that's what you're gonna try to do. That's what go to roll me a stealth check. And are you coming with me, Jeff? I'll go. With you. Yeah. Okay. Natural twenty. Seven. Ooh. Okay. I will leave. And that is a ten. Ten. Okay. As you all get close, you can see up on the ridge by, uh, where you had the, uh, the woman with the bow who saw you all coming in, shot that arrow, uh, waking everyone up from your first uh, uh, encounter with the aliens. You can see that ridge now has about two dozen tents on it. Uh, all three of you go to roll me a perception. Perception check, please. Sixteen. Sixteen. Twenty-one. All Natural three of you 20. can tell these tents have been freshly moved. Freshly moved. Did, uh... Tonight. Did, um... There's hardly any tracks up here. Darius's tent, or the Harvest's tents, look different than the other ones? No. Okay. I mean, it's kind of you know, hard to blend in when, you know... Uh, but you guys can go, go through this, like, mini tent station where it is. Uh, you guys see that there's a few uh, lanterns on inside some of these tents, but there is no one milling about. As you get to the edge of it, you guys can look down into Squatter's Plot, and you can see there's a lot of light down there. You can see there's actually what appears to be strange, floating, glowing orbs of light that are all over this place now. And at this point, with your all's perception checks, you guys can see... At this point, it looks like uh, quite a few of the uh, dead and wounded have been moved out, mainly the wounded first. They're starting to move out the dead. Uh, by your count, there's at least eight more that are still dead, that are slowly being uh, pulled on, that, that are being taken away. You don't see really anybody else milling about, but there are, you can very clearly see a golden scale dragonborn walking around ripping open tents and you know, every once in a while you can see him start talking to people get people out of the tent and in one of these instances you see him grab a person lift them off their feet get them face to snout with him and starts yelling something that at this distance you guys can't hear but he definitely seems agitated. Then when they <coughs> send you, well, either they give him the information that he wants or they don't, he just throws them into the mud and then continues on. And they kind of scurry away and run out of squatter's plot. You guys can watch until the sun begins to come up before you start to feel very exposed with the uh, encroaching light. Do you think it's a bad idea to be here, Carl? I'd agree. It's, uh, let, let's go on back. Come. I think we've slayed all the week uh, together. Uh, uh, what's it called? Uh, thank heaven for natural twenties, right? Yeah. Uh, as you all, can, you all can see, you've taken off at this point because uh, there doesn't seem to be anything happening that you can assist with. So you're going to try to find yourself at least some of the uh, var varmints that are probably about a half day's walk from here. Well, I'm going to go out. My plan is to learn the land. Yeah. So you're not... If you catch anything, that's fine. So what I want you to do is go ahead and roll me a survival check, please. Uh, 19. 19? So you, you're pretty good at this. So you were a scout for a lot of years. You spend the day, the entirety of the day, going around Brownwater and 
learning the lay of the land. And you can see a few spots where, okay, if I post up here in the morning, I might be able to catch uh, these gophers when they're coming out. Yeah, at night. Rabbits. yeah, rabbits, conies, you know, anything any, like you start m m marking it in your mind areas that that you could at least get something. You do notice though that there are no game trails within a, like probably a quarter day away from Brownwater. It's probably been you know I mean they're not going to get too close to the city, uh, but you might be able to find some if you if you're willing to head further out and spend a couple of days out there. And you can definitely see what they're talking about when they say there are there are hunters in this area that are definitely definitely taking a a, a liking around Brownwater, though you don't happen to run into any today. Seems like uh, something is keeping them in in Brownwater for some reason. But you have a productive day for you. I mean, when you get back to uh, Brownwater, you're hot, you're sweaty, you're tired, but you're very happy with what with what you know what happened. To the uh, broken parts. Okay. Get yourself a bath. Okay. Uh, she, uh, this time she still charges you two notes for the back. Okay. okay. Uh, the rest of you, so he's done that. The rest of you, a couple things happen. So, as the day wears on, you guys begin to hear more and more about what happened in Squatter's Plot. There was a massive fight between the Harless Brothers and apparently a bunch of Genyu dealers, that's the way to say it, the way I was saying it before, before I was wrong, Genyu. That is, everybody go ahead and, uh, well, you don't hear this, but uh, but they can tell you afterwards so you can go ahead and roll too. But, uh, go ahead and roll me a uh, nature check for what you know about Genyu. Nope. Ooh. 13. Sixteen. Eight. And what was yours? Twenty-one. Twenty-one. That's filthy drug. I don't want to traffic with. Uh, so you know this, you know this, you know this, and you know this. Um, Genyu, not only is it a filthy drug, uh, you guys know that Genyu is a relatively new thing. During the United Stars Fall, a people believe that gods fell to Earth. Like during that night, that literally there are gods that walk among you. One of these that they believe was Kiek, a uh, god of the, the hearth and the home, hit a rather fragile patch of earth that caved in a huge section of earth, which became known as Kiek's Fall. When this happened, it threw up the strange fungus and growths that grew down that subterranean area into the air, which somehow or another infected the grass that Arnox grazed upon. They consume the grass, their metabolism isn't affected by the drug, but where they defecate, stalks of mushroom-like growths without bulbous heads grow out of the excrement. This is harvested, and it is one of the most addictive substances on the planet. What does it do? It's so it's shrooms. Uh, no, it's not shrooms. It's like methamphetamines, pot, and crack all mixed together. Ooh. Oh, so, yeah. uh, worse than all. Mm. Yes, it is a depressant and a stimulant, but it's also addictive to the point of if you become truly addicted, addicted to it, if you were to lose uh, the ability to take Genyu, you would start murdering people to try to do whatever you could to get to it. And if you didn't get to it quickly enough within two to three days, you would die. Those dealers apparently lost about 10, uh, it varies between 10 and a dozen uh, dealers were killed, though not all of them were killed. The Horace Brothers lost eight good men, including your friendly neighborhood Typhling and Bugbear. The gray skin girl? Mm, no, no, no. The, the bugbear that's uh, that was uh, Dalius's uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. bodyguard. The type of, uh, uh, one behind the bar or the other one? No, no, no. Sean is fine. 
uh, the bugbear bartender's fine. It, it's uh, Dalius's pro, uh, personal yeah, bodyguard. Typhling girl with a broadsword. Fine. Oh, which type cool. was okay. it? Uh, the typhling that always, that the one that you guys dealt with at the uh, duel. Oh, okay. Yeah, the dirty brown skin one. Yeah. The one that, the one that tried to, that attempted to cheat. Wait, ah. it's not the bug that we knew from before, Nope. Okay. You guys actually haven't seen him since you've been in town. Okay, good. He probably took off. Uh, you don't think so. With his friendship with uh, Sparkfire, you don't think he'll just leave town. But uh, it takes hours for this information to come out. During that time, uh, I'm going to go ahead and go through this a little bit because it is getting a bit late. Uh, you guys hear two pieces of information. And it's odd, it seems odd timing to you, one of these pieces of information. The first one is, apparently... The body that resides at the bottom of Kiak's fall, that is believed to be Kiak himself, a body that has laid catatonic and staring up into the sky, blinked. What, last night? Uh, stories vary. Some people say weeks ago, some people say a couple of days ago. But word has traveled that this entity blinked. Can we do a religion check? Sure. More uh, general knowledge about Q. Go ahead. Nine. Nine? Okay. Give me a sec. Let me pull him up. You know that. Kik is the god of her, uh, god of the hearth, the home and, hu and community. Uh, he was seen as a gentle deity, uh, a gentle uh, son of Sabbath, the first son of Sabbath. Uh, very much involved with his followers, though their power has waned since Star's fall. You know their followers are very determined to travel and spread good. They're very uh, uh, set on building communities. You will even find a few followers of them, uh, even within Brownwater. And almost anyone that goes to travel, uh, goes to leave the safety of you know, man-made cities to go off in the wilderness, would say a prayer to Kiak before he did so. Uh, not much else uh, that you know about him, but you do know that it is widely believed that that body is him, and an entire community of people has drawn up around this this very dangerous place to worship him. And if they, if it has been reported that that body did in fact blink, and it is Kiak, that is. Absolutely huge for any follower of, the, of that deity. Okay. The other piece of information that you guys discover is that the alderman, Wes Wellslin, will be staying in town for the next few months at least, as okay. Master Sevenson has been called away to Thregger Dam. So you all reports to vary as to why, while you know, while conspiracy theories are all over. You know, these are simple folk. You know, anything that happens, it must be this huge thing. Yes. Clarification. Yes. He's not staying with the Fergus. He's staying. No, he, he uh, Wellslin was staying with the Fergus, but now that uh, Sevenson is leaving, people have seen that Wellslin has moved his residence into Town Hall. Which is literally their residence as well as the like town hall. Okay. Which is town hall is literally one room. Uh, is it known when is it known when he's going to Thurger Dam? Uh he uh, left this morning. Uh. And with under heavy guard as well. Uh, including one of Wellesland's own personal guard with him. So he has his one personal guard remaining. But Wellesland has now moved into the town hall. And is taking care of his duties under his direction while he is away. So, so Alderman is now the mayor. Uh, no, Alderman is the Alderman. The mayor, he's, but he is only here under the capacity to help <coughs> Sevenson, as Sevenson is his good friend, 
and the town cannot be left without a master. So instead of him having to name a subordinate to fill his shoes for the time being, as there is no one qualified, Wellesland has graciously stepped in to do that, uh, that duty for him. Uh, he's an alderman, so he is free to do so. You hear that apparently he did have a, uh, a chat with a bunch of the merchants and other people and other prominent people in town that, of course, none of you all were, were invited to within town hall. Uh, and a few things that were said there was that he would continue with uh, Sevenson's vision for groundwater, the vision that him and Holland Rollick came up with. And the town is in good hands. And a lot of people seem to be very happy that Sevenson is not currently in town, as you guys have gotten a feeling that some people are not happy with his leadership. And Wellesland is very charismatic and very and seen as a good leader. Caliph. Yes. As you're hanging around the Ember Inn, as there's too much happening outside, too much commotion. Uh, most, even most of the uh, merchants aren't dealing too much in today. I mean, this is the most, this is the worst shootout and the most amount of deaths in a single night from a single act in Brownwater in its history. This is not, this doesn't happen here. Yeah, it's a dangerous place. You can have shootouts, you have bar fights, people get, you know, mugged or raped and things like that, but a murder to this scale does not happen. I mean, close to 20 people died. So you're taking a shelter within the Ember Inn, and at this point, Cheer has gone off with Fionn. You happen to be by your lonesome. When a man approaches you, he has black hair that is parted very neatly, uh, like that clean line. You can tell that it like, takes time for them to really get in there and you know part their hair properly. He wears a suit, gray suit, three-piece, two buttons, tails like you wear on yours. He approaches you. Oh, do you mind if I join you? Uh, go right ahead. Uh, he flips the, the tail out, sits down, and, uh, would you like a drink? Uh, my treat. Yes, yes, I would. Uh, can we get two, three tree ciders here, please? And uh, at this point, uh, Nat is here with Norris, and Nat is, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. And she comes in and hands him, like, goes, oh, you know, slow down, okay? And then, do, you, do you happen to know where they make these ciders? Um, well, that's well, you should ask. Uh, I'm a representative ho of House Kesser. Ah, uh, my name is Dufren. Dufren. Dufren Kesser. Uh, no, I'm, no, no, I'm sorry, not Kesser. Uh, no, 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 no uh, just Dufren. Dufren. Uh, just Dufren will do. Uh, I am not of the family. I'm just a representative of them. Uh, I had heard rumors that uh, you had worked with uh, the beautiful and stunning Miss Marigold Creel. Oh, well, uh, I can't just say exactly that I have, because I like to keep my business contacts oh. confidential. Okay, so, well, me knowing that you have, oh, I, I can understand that. So, you wouldn't be, um, allow me to be privy to what that, uh, contract you had with her was? Or is there a contract? Are you a, uh, on the free market? Um, I very much like to be on the free market. Oh, well, then... I have something that I'd like to speak to you about uh, in the utmost confidence. Uh, oh, okay. If uh, the very fashionable uh, Miss Creel uh, trusts you, then I believe I can as well. Mm -hmm. uh, if uh, you don't mind, uh, I'm going to do something strange. And he looks over at uh, uh, Nat and says, uh, Please do not be alarmed. Uh, and forgive me. And he... Puts, pulls a small book out of his pocket, lays it down in front of him, opens the pages, opens to a particular page, uh, and starts reciting strange words while taking a chunk and running a line around the table that you all are sitting at. After he sits back down and recites a few more words, suddenly there appears to be an opaque dome that you are now sitting in that I seems to be centered on him. And do I know what this dome does? Go ahead and roll me an arcana check. Uh, that's not the, the greatest. Uh, that would be a eight. Uh, you have you've never seen this magic before. 
Ah, uh, exactly. oh, there. Now, um, no one will be able to overhear our conversation, so you may speak plainly. You don't have to bother whispering, as nothing can get to, uh, in within this that uh, I do not allow. So, as I said, my name is Dufresne, and I represent the Kessers, and they have themselves a bit of a problem. Mm. Uh, I don't know if you've heard the rumors that a family has disappeared within the, the homesteads. Mm. Well, that is accurate, but uh, it is worse as a second family uh, went missing as of yesterday. A second family? Yes. And the Kesser, fa- the Kesser are worried. They lament the ability of their men to actually investigate this crime and come to a to find the culprit. So they have decided to look for, um, how do we say, um, eligible agents outside of the family dynamic within Brownwater. Mm. And seeing as how you have worked with Maribel Creel as well as the sheriff, and I've heard a few other things, but we won't get into that. Seems as if uh, you are able to um, keep a level head on your shoulders when family matters are involved. Mm. Seems about a good description of me. Ah, well, that's splendid. So, they would like you and your troop, as it were, to head to the Kessler homesteads mm-hmm. and find the culprits behind this. Culprit or culprits, and should justice be uh, met it out, that would be fine with them. They're willing to pay, but they uh, are not much for paying without uh, being able to see what their investment is worth. So, uh, understanding that you just work with Maribel Creel, I'm sure you are flush with, with, with whatever resources you would need to make such an investigation possible. Mm-hmm. And should, should you complete it, well, not only will you have the grateful uh, family of Kesser uh, smiling upon you, but they do pay quite handsomely. And let's be honest, the Creels and the Fergus. They're not the real power with them brown water. Uh, um, may I ask what about I may expect as compensation so that I may properly convince the, my compatriots? Oh, notes. Uh, depending on the swiftness and the... Hmm. Quietness? Yes. Uh... The swiftness that you do it, the quietness that, uh, that you do it without making too much noise. Uh, we don't need you running around just shooting people at random. Mm, of course. So it really depends upon your the way you compose yourself in this matter will warrant how much you are worth paying for it. And in the future, you will be, uh, well, the first one that we go to when we have other such matters. Uh, that is... Uh rather valuable in itself. The Kesser family is most generous. Um, can you give me the names of the families that have disappeared? Uh, I can do so if you agree to, uh, at least look into this matter. Uh, the only reason I ask is because I am going, I'm planning on looking into it. Good. Then, uh, he hands you a, a sealed envelope. Ah. And when you flip it over, you can see it has a wax seal on it, and it has the mark of House Kesser. Ah. I will open this later then. Yeah, indeed, uh, where uh, other prying eyes cannot see it. But uh, of course, your companions uh, should be trustworthy, I would assume. Mm-hmm. Well, good. Uh, I'm glad we had this conversation. It has been very nice to meet you. Oh, you as well. Thank you. And he stands up, shakes your hand, then uh, closes his eyes for a moment, and the bubble just melts away. And you see people, like, literally standing just outside the circle that were like, what is this? And he looks at, uh, and apologies, uh, no damage was caused, just we needed a bit of privacy. And she you could have just gone, like, in the back room or something. But thanks. And then, oh, I'm so sorry, miss. Uh, maybe next time. And he... Uh, oh, I'm sorry, and he uh, throws down ten notes on the table. Drinks are on me, and turns around and walks out. I'll have another. <laughs> I think I'm going to have a couple, too, on that. <laughs> so, at this point, with the information that was just gathered and everything else that has happened, I think this is a great point for us to go ahead and call it for tonight, as you guys can collect up in the morning and have yourselves a conversation about what your next steps are to see what you all want to do. Thank you all very much for joining us. Thank you once again to our newfound friend, Lost Waffle. 
I hope you enjoyed the game session as much as we enjoyed having it. Definitely character-centric stuff. Definitely happy uh, where it went and glad to see you. Uh, some things are changing, some group dynamics are changing. I'm, I'm enjoying it. Let's see where this goes. Once again, thank you for joining us. Thank you to uh, Game Vault for sponsoring us. Thank you to Military Gamer Supply. Thank you to Davis Towels and Train. So I'm thinking myself. Thank you, especially uh, for if you, if you're watching. If you like what you see, uh, go on to YouTube. Please like and subscribe. Uh, we're trying to get some more uh, viewers on uh, Twitch as well. So if you're watching on Twitch, that's great too. Fantastic. If you want to get us on Mixer, that's great. We post up daily. Uh, well, not daily, but weekly on Facebook. Uh, sometimes we throw out funny memes, all that good stuff. Uh, we're trying to get other events that we're going to be uh, recording and getting on the channel for you guys. If you guys have any suggestions or any requests, go ahead and hit us up on Facebook. You can direct message us or you know you can comment on one of our uh, one of our posts but yeah if you guys want to see a particular role-playing game played or if you guys want to see a particular board game played or something like that or you guys just want to see us mess around and play uh, overcooked uh, uh, again you know that that I had a blast with that I thought it was real fun so if you guys want to see stuff like that let us know uh, thanks for hanging out with us dudes we love you and keep rolling them dice good night